recording, Tammy. Great. Uh, welcome, everybody. It is Tuesday, January 25th. This is the monthly board meeting for Manhattan Community Board 1. My name is Tammy Meltzer. I'm the chairperson for Community Board 1. 2022 brings some new changes to the way we operate our community board meetings uh, based on what we have been advised by the borough president's office. We will not only have a public session, but we will also have a public hearing. Um, they are two distinctly separate things. Um, the public session will come first, as always, um, and comments from members of the public will be limited to two minutes per speaker. Um, in general, our timing works 6 to 6.45 on that for the people who sign up to speak. You must sign up before 6 p.m. if this is your first time with us. Uh, please note that we do close signups at 6. Then at 6.45, we will do the public hearing. Each month, we will have a different topic on the public hearings. We are going to start by doing neighborhoods, um, and that will be 6.45 to 7. Whoever shows will be recognized to speak if you have something to add from a particular neighborhood. Alrighty. So, and then we go into our business session where, uh, if you are unaware, the business session is for board members only. So they are the only ones who will be unmuted to speak along with electeds and elected representatives if they come to the business session. With all those lovely dry notes, let's start with our public session portion. We have uh, about a dozen or so people who have signed up to speak. So I will start, I'm going to call your name and I'm going to go in no, not necessarily any particular order. Um, and so I'll give you a heads up with where we're going. So first person to speak will be Andy Sass Sosin. After Andy Sosin will be okay. After Andy Sosin is going to be Edwin Tang. After Edwin Tang is Bradley Silverbush. And then Stephen Rand. Okay. So uh, in that order, let's go for unmuting Andy. Adrian, Andy Sosin, please. Find them. Can we unmute Andy Sosin, please? It's not a request. Okay, they should be unmuted. Andy, welcome. Thank you, Tammy. Good evening. How are you? Very well, thank you. You have two minutes. Welcome and please continue. Thank you. Um, I will try not to use all of two minutes, but I am here to support the Seaport Coalition in the zoning challenge to say that we are very concerned about the 250 Water Street Brownfield cleanup program that is being rushed through and we have real major issues around it. And um, I'm not speaking for the Seaport Coalition, but I am speaking for myself and my family. We live in Southbridge Towers and this is an existential crisis that, that is in front of us. Um, the second thing I want to do is support the 100% uh, affordable um, uh, World Trade Center 5. Um, I, I feel strongly that it's, it's, it's people's um, money and people and taxpayers should have some control over what goes on as far as development. Um, and the third thing is I want to tell everybody that on behalf of the Remember the Triangle Fire Coalition, I have entered a participatory budgeting um, request uh, for City Council District 1 for masonry to uh, adhere the Triangle Fire Memorial to the Ash Brown Building uh, one block off of Washington Square on Washington Place. I know it's not in it, it's not in our community board, but it is in our co council district. So um, it's done by local people going and voting for the uh, particular budget items. So if you see triangle fire masonry on that, I urge you to vote for it. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, and thank you for joining us. Next up will be Edwin Tang, and after Edwin will be Bradley Silverbush, please. Board. Uh, my name is Edwin Tang. I'm a practicing architect and a former code official at the Department of Buildings. I am speaking uh, on behalf of the residents of Church Street in opposition to the liquor license application of 293 Church Street, the bar named L'Entre. Uh, per my review of the records uh, at the OB, I see that the, that the space was changed from the prior use of a retail store to the current eating and drinking establishment with bar, which is a change of occupancy that triggers an accessible entrance upgrade. And that has not been provided by the establishment. Uh, that's not in compliance. Uh, there's two more points I'd like to make. The certificate of occupancy uh, issued by the Department of Buildings for this bar indicates that the seller level is not permitted to have any occupants permanently. People can only pass by for storage, retrieval, and to use the bathroom. Uh, there have been reports uh, by residents living in the surrounding area that there is food prep uh, on premises, and that is not allowed. And the kitchen, the so-called kitchen, is really just a storage area in the cellar, and, and that's it's not allowed to be used for food prep. Uh, there also have been reports by surrounding residents that the residential lobby of 293 Church Street is being used for delivery of commercial items into the bar. That is a violation of zoning use regulations, uh, also not permitted. And lastly, uh, there have been many accounts of uh, reported incidents of excessive noise and vibration coming from this, uh, this establishment, uh, and it's, it's creating a quality of life issue for surrounding residents. Uh, the owner of the bar has claimed that sound attenuation measures have been taken, but Clearly, they are not uh, not sufficient. So, in light of these uh, transgressions, I think this liquor license should not be approved. It's in violation of codes and laws. And uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for speaking up, Edwin. Next is going to be Bradley Silverbush. That's fine, Bradley. And if you hear your name called, if you don't mind, but uh, sticking your hand up in the attendee section. We do have 44 attendees on, so it would be very nice to be able to find you a little quicker. Good evening. My name is Bradley Silverbush. I'm a partner at Rosenberg and Estes, and we were retained by one of the neighbors, Stephen Rand, to oppose this application. In reviewing the application, uh, a couple of things jumped off the page at me. First of all, there's already 19 establishments within 500 feet of this establishment that are already licensed to. Uh, to sell liquor. When it became apparent that there were problems with this application, the applicant modified it to request only wine and beer. But we believe that's just a subterfuge in order to get a foot in the door. And the reason we say this is uh, on Friday, the landlord notified us, the landlord of the building notified us that this tenant is currently in default for five and a half months rent, totaling $74,250. And the idea that a license would be granted to a tenant who is in default for such substantial arrears makes me question what the real motivation is. And I would think that one would be able to see through the curtain and understand that this is just an attempt to sell the premises and capitalize on a license once it's issued. I went there on Friday to visit the premises to see what sound attenuation measures had been taken uh, with Mr. Tang. And much to, my, much to my surprise, many of the representations made in the application were false. There are no uh, insulation materials behind any of the speakers. There is nothing to prevent the sound from escaping through the skylight and the rear facing window, which are a huge source of annoyance to neighbors in the building. I've received literally scores of signatures from neighborhood residents protesting this establishment because of the noise it creates. Uh, as a person who worked in this neighborhood for decades, I understand the, the nature of it. And, and, and really the idea of another bar, just it's, it's destroying the character of the neighborhood. And I ask that the application be denied. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Bradley. Next, we're going to Stephen Rand. Even St after Stephen Rand is Nancy Wender. And then Leo Pulito. 
Nancy, I see your hand. Stephen, I see yours. Thank you, Nancy. You'll be after that. Stephen Rand, we're going to unmute you. You should be able to unmute yourself now, Stephen. Stephen, can you unmute yourself or we will pass you by and come back to you? Okay, let's pass Stephen by and nope, oh, nope, I see him. Hi, Stephen. Okay. Yep, there okay. you go. Thank you so much. You're on. Thank you. And thank you for your indulgence in letting me speak. Uh, did you get that answer? Uh, I'm really confused. We've presented a great deal of documented proof that 293 Church Street is a nightclub, that it has been a nightclub for more than a year, getting many noise complaints. It was a nightclub last weekend with loud music and parties Friday and Saturday night that were restarted following the decision to grant Mr. Normandin uh, a, an alcohol license. The only thing that shows this is a wine bar is a cartoon on his application, which is riddled with non facts and misrepresentations. The only reason it's a wine bar now, as Bradley noted, is so Mr. Norman didn't can get a liquor license. It wasn't a wine bar until the neighbors started objecting. In the last year, Mr. Normandin has alienated every neighbor surrounding him, acting like a nightclub with loud music and crowds that are not from Tribeca or Soho. You have petitions signed by more than 40 neighbors who are directly attached to 293 objecting. He originally came to you for a liquor license and a 2 a.m. closing, like a nightclub. The place is the same, speaker system is the same, lack of sound remediation is the same too. He told you he makes food, but he doesn't have a kitchen. He offers eggs and other cooked food, telling you they are cooked elsewhere and are run back and forth all night from an unidentified caterer. You don't believe this, do you? Mr. Normandin's ads for renting out his space are still online for 5,000 a night, 15,000 a week, and 65,000 a month. And in his, and um, uh, make note that he advertises his speaker system in these ads. In a letter that he wrote to me that you have a copy of, he writes, as it stands, until we are able to open the space to the public with proper licensing from the SLA to sell alcohol, we need Apologies, but we do have a two minute limit. And I know there are several other people who have signed up to speak. Nancy, I believe you are next. You so, should be able to unmute now if you can. Nancy, Nancy, you should be able to unmute yourself. I do see you with your hand up. And she looks like she has audio issues. So don't see, I see her trying to unmute. Hi, um, can you hear me? I can, welcome to community board one, Nancy, it's your turn, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate the time. I'll try to be quick. Um, my name is Nancy Kahn, co-founder of Park Row Alliance, representing residences, residents and small businesses in and around China, um, Chatham Green and Chatham Towers. I'm speaking on behalf of the people impacted by the demolition, remediation, and construction of the borough based jails at 124, 125 White Street. I commend the community board for its dogged persistence in holding the city accountable and fully support the resolution. The city has been presenting and using these presentations as a means to fulfill their obligations for community engagement. We all know that these have been less than engagement, but rather one sided um, communications. The mayor committed to reviewing these plans during his campaign and he needs to pause and review it. I've been in touch with the other community boards throughout the city who are also impacted, including Bronx, Queens, and Brooklyn, and we are all in the same situation. The city's proceeding without consideration of the concerns raised, the changes and assumptions that question the fundamentals of the plan. The former mayor's chief architect also raised questions two years late, but better late than never. She acknowledges that the mega towers do not work and are not safe and made recommendations for smaller additional sites to be used. She listed nearly four to five other buildings throughout the city. 
all should be bearing the burden, not just here in Chinatown, Tribeca and Lower Manhattan. She also indicates that more hospital beds should be allocated in investments in mental health institutions. Given what is happening in the, with the crime in the city, the, these need to be considered. Lastly, she notes that the design build is flawed, exactly what we said initially. This limits competition and creativity when it is needed the most. Again, we thank the, um, we thank the community board for what it's doing and we fully support the resolution. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And thank you for your speed and brevity. We appreciate that. Um, Leo, Melito is next after Leo. I'm going to go to William Bylowski, Jonathan Hollander. Leo, you are next. You should be able to mute now. Thank you. Leo, Nancy and Stephen, if you don't mind taking your hands down. Leo, can you check if Leo is a dial-in user? Oh, no, I see him. I see Leo Polito. We can move on and circle back to Leo. Leo, please raise your hand when you come back. Okay, fantastic. Let's move on and do uh, William Vyloski. Sam's up. Hey, Bill. Bill, hi. hi. You're hey, hi. Bill. What can you hear me? I can. You're two Great. minutes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Bialoski. I'm an architect uh, who's been in, uh, living in the northeast corner of uh, Tribeca for a little over 30 years now. I'm representing the Walker Street Homeowners Association tonight, and we uh, commend the community board for its effort uh, to help stop the demolition of the Barrow Base Jail uh, or the detention center, and I encourage the uh, board members to, to vote for this uh, motion to delay demolition. Uh, and I would like the uh, board members to consider adding these following questions to the request of the mayor, uh, which speak directly to the borough-based jail program from the previous mayor. Uh, please pause now and rethink. Uh, why not complete a feasibility study comparing the construction costs of a high-rise facility versus a low-rise facility? Why not compare the cost schedule and phasing costs of building a multiple building facility on an open campus versus the cost of building a single building facility on a densely populated site? Why not complete an operational life cycle study, cost study comparing the operations of a low rise facility on an open campus site versus the operation of a high rise facility on a densely populated site? Why not complete comparative analysis of the likely success of providing a restorative justice program in a low rise multi building facility in an open campus site versus a high rise single building facility on a densely populated site? Why not complete a comparison of the environmental impacts of construction, constructing a low rise facility on an open campus site versus constructing a high rise facility on a densely populated site? Why not complete a comparison of the safety concerns? And so on and so on. I think you understand where I'm going with this. It's time to stop what we're doing and rethink this ill-conceived borough-based jail plan. Please dial in and check on the humane alternative. That Thank you, Bill. Thank you very, very much. I'm gonna do a check back for Jonathan Hollander, who should have his hand up. Who is speaking on the same topic? Um, we're going to move on. I don't see Jonathan Hollander's hand up. If you can see if you can catch Jonathan. Not seeing Jonathan in the list. 
Yeah, I don't know if he's one of our dial in users or not. Um, without star him, three raises your hand if you're on the phone. Okay, I'm going to go to Edward Kucha. Can you folks hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to give you my sort of uh, regular routine of the updates. Uh, I, again, as for the folks that don't know, uh, I'm a neighbor to the proposed jail. My office is at 121 Walker Street. I had a nice visit today with some of the folks from Gramercy, Joseph, and Scott. And I was informed I do not have a shared wall with the jail, but rather an adjacent wall which I guess from an engineering point means something, but to me, it doesn't mean that much. Uh, at least they were very nice. Uh, I have not had a return visit from the uh, city of New York. Uh, I had a visit a few weeks ago uh, by Pauline Chan and uh, some of the uh, other ladies. Uh, I did have that issue with insurance. They have not gotten back to me. For those who don't recall, the city of New York has asked me to add the city as a co-insured on my insurance, which is ridiculous, but uh, I inquired as to what's going on with that and they have not yet replied or returned to me in any way. I have had no further outreach and I don't know what's going on and I'm not very happy and remain extremely opposed to this ridiculous jail project. And I hope and pray that it stops and I commend the CB1 for their wonderful, wonderful work in doing their best to stop it. Thank you all. I'll keep it simple and I'll keep giving this board updates as a uh, community outreach goes. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Edward, very much. It was really astonishing to have heard last time uh, that having lived next door and heard zero from the city until 2022 does seem a bit um, lack of transparent or engaged. So I'll leave that as my one line comment on that. Um, we're going to go to Megan Malvern. After Megan Malvern, we're going to go to Diane Stein. And then Bob Townley. Edward, yeah, this is Lucian, the district manager. Um, if you could email me, um, I can work directly with you and see if I can expedite this process. Um, uh, Justine can give you my email address, but I can also put it, uh, send it to you in the chat. Perfect. Thank you. And let's see, let's have Mr. Ram's hand go down because he has already spoken. Megan Malvern. Not seeing a Megan. Yeah, I'm looking to see if it's under something else. Okay, and we'll just keep moving along. Diane Stein, who I do see her hand up. And then after Diane, we'll go to Zach Normandin. Can you hear me? I can, Diane. Welcome. Your two minutes starts now. Okay. Uh, my name is Diane Stein. I'm a public member of the Quality of Life and Service Delivery Committee on Community Board 1, and I want to talk in favor of, in support of the 100% affordable World Trade, Five World Trade Center. I'm a resident of, as a resident of Independence Plaza, um, I can attest to what happens when, about the lack of affordability, uh, lack of affordable housing in this area. I mean, we were a Michelama rental and the tenants had no say in the landlord's decision to take us out of the program. And, um, you know, we, we helped build this neighborhood. We stayed through 9-11 and helped bring, you know, help get services to the community. And it's just very sad to see what's happening um, in Independence Plaza and Southbridge Towers and other places. And, it, and as, the old guard, as the old tenants move out, the new tenants, there's no um, continuity. There's, they, they can't afford to stay in the neighborhood because the rents keep going up. So I 
just um, hope you know when I hope that you all support this resolution because um, we need affordability at at all levels and diversity in our community. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you very much for coming. I do see Megan Malvern. I see Megan with your first name. So I'm going to ask that Mimi and the team unmute you first. And thank you, Diane, for going. You hear me now? I can, Megan. Great. Well sorry. Go fast. Sorry. Um, I want to, I'm calling in in support of the CB1 resolution um, to slow down, pause, and reconsider the uh, borough based jail and the um, destruction of the tombs. And I think that it's a fantastic resolution and support that idea. And I also just want to point out that um, we've learned in 250 Water Street that there isn't sometimes um, a lot of care that goes into the research that's put forward to these communities. Uh, so I would like to offer myself to those who are looking at the um, details of the borough-based um, evidence, and I'm happy to dig down on some of those details and really find out what the truths are. So um, I'm in support of the resolution, and thank you, CB1, for doing what you do. Thank you, Megan, and it's always nice to have more advocates, you know, come and attend the meetings. Um, so we're going to jump back in. I believe the next person after Megan I called was Zach Normandin. And then Jill. Good time. I see Zach. You're you're muted. Welcome, Zach. Your two minutes starts now. Okay, great. Um, I'm the owner at L'Entre at 293 Church Street. And also um, uh, directly above the facility on the second floor for more than three years now. Um, I just want to clarify and be very clear that the allegations presented against us are untruthful. Mr. Rand has hired everyone who, who you have heard tonight regarding our business to speak against us, and it's it's unfair and and really not. Uh, uh, it's very challenging for me to hear as a small business owner in the area. Um, we have submitted to the CB1 licensing and permits committee data to support our defense that have been that have been made against us. Um, I'm a single father with three young children and have spent again the last three years of my life developing this property at 293 Church Street, which was a vacant property before we moved in. We have made considerable progress in improving the property and my primary goal is improving the neighborhood. I, we have we have done everything in our power to uh, listen to all of the different uh, concerns that have been expressed, and I, I, I truly want to support the business community and help the city post COVID as we work to to recover. So I hope you consider these truths in your in your decision regarding our application. And uh, thank you very much for the time. Thank you very much, Zach, for coming um, and for speaking up regarding your property. Please make sure that you are fully signed in on the attendance sheet. Uh, Jill Goodkind is next. Hi, so um, I wanted to share positive information um, because I, I found many people may not be aware of the numerous success stories in this city of 100% affordable buildings. Buildings that have been around for decades that are well run, they've been thriving, sometimes so successfully as uh, D uh, Diane Stein mentioned uh, about Independence Plaza that they get taken market rate. So these buildings, they provide social, financial, physical benefits, not only to the residents, uh, but to the community. 
And a few quick examples would be Manhattan Plaza that has over 1600 apartments and 1512 Townsend Avenue in the Bronx, which is, I believe, 18 buildings. Um, 1887 Rutgers is another example. So these are long standing buildings. They're well maintained, they're well built, they're well managed, and they are the examples, exemplars of a successful 100% affordable building as would be a 100% affordable five World Trade Center. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. And uh, Jill forgot to mention, she's also one of our very hardworking public members at CB1. So thank you very much for all that you do. Um, if you don't mind putting your hand down as well as Zach putting your hand down, that would be great. We're gonna recognize Bob Townley next. I still don't see Jonathan Hollander. If you are there, please. Um, raise your hand if you are on a dial-in. If not, after him would be Howard Hui, and then we will end our public session. Bob, take it away. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Tammy. So, I uh, think I just want to speak on the left, Sheldon Silver, who, for our community, was a patriot and who after 9-11 secured and helped on so many issues. I don't really know what to say. Shelley's not here. And I think he knew from some of us attending the trial and from communications to him that he was still our Shelly Silver, Senate member and speaker. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. I'm going to mention that later. Okay, Howard, way. I'm uh, president of Chatham Towers Board, and as a matter of fact, I'm on uh, a board Zoom right now, so I'm trying to do, do Zooms and not do them either well. Anyway, I'd like to thank uh, CB1 uh, for their uh, support on the Borough Bay Shares, and, and Chatham Towers Board and I fully support the resolution to stop the demolition. It's so critical uh, because uh, the mayor has not decided what the final outcome is, and he might change. And let's not uh, demolish anything before the final plan is fully realized and 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 made. That's, uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Howard, if you don't mind, please fully finishing out your login for your attendance. Um, so we have your contact details for later. Same thing as I mentioned for Zach. So thank you very much. Um, with that, I do not see Jonathan Hollander still. That ends for the public session who have signed up. Please remember that our amazing elected representatives and their reps will speak during the business session. Um, so right now we will end our public session and start with what is now the public hearing portion, which is as required by the Manhattan Borough President's Office. We did have uh, one sign up. I'm not sure if you signed up exactly. So let us find Can you know, just one second. Madam chair, will this person be timed as well? And how long? Uh, two minutes. Same Thank as you. everyone else. And I'm not sure if you signed up in the right spot or not. Um, but that's okay. This is Alex Lloyd. And Alex Lloyd's hand is up. Alex, welcome to community board one. You have two minutes. Hi, uh, indeed. I signed up for the wrong slot. Thanks for having me. Um, and I'm an engineer. I love the new clock. Um, I live, uh, at 281 church. So I just wanted to speak, uh, I think in front of the committee, there's 279 
and 293 Church tonight. Um, I am not one of the people hired by Stephen Rand, but I am a little bit nervous about the 21st and 22nd liquor license in this pretty densely licensed area. Uh, we have had historically a lot of trouble with mid block spaces that have either a greenhouse or a just brick wall for 279 church. Um, I have listened to the music when it was uh, parties from between tenants. Uh, the current tenant um, is nominally trying to just start a small bar in the back of that space. And if the stipulations have uh, an enforceable teeth about the transmission of noise, ideally a STC rating of 65 or greater, or um, a prohibition against bass emitting speakers, I think it could be fine. Um, for 293, uh, the idea of having a bar with a greenhouse that opens onto an alley that has a zillion residential apartments onto it, uh, it's very strange to me that over so much opposition, the application has made it this far. Um, and with those comments, I'll give you 20 seconds back. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Um, I appreciate your timing. I have to give a big shout out to Mimi, um, who is our assistant secretary on that awesome timer. So thank you. Thank you. That really has actually helped. And with that note, we close the public hearing, seeing no other signups. It is officially opened and closed. And I'll give you a second. There we go. We're going to enter into our business session. For which uh, we are doing a little bit uh, the way the format will work. This time is going to be an adoption of the 2021 minutes, which we are going to do by roll call tonight. Um, and the reason is because that will be our first official for attendance. It will be roll call for the minutes and roll call for the last resolution. Thank you so much. And then we will do updates from our elected officials first and then our reps. And again, we'll work on timing as we go. So Mimi, take it away. Let's do our minutes. And unmute and then switch. Um, all right. Um, Emma Russo. I'm on the phone. Can you hear me? Yes. Mimi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, Mark, we yeah, can. Okay. I'm on the phone, so I don't know how this works. With so, uh, so yes to the minutes. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. I'm present. I'm present. How do I unmute? Don't worry. Uh, what do I do? You are unmuted. All right. We'll mute you, Mark. Don't worry. Oh shit. Right. Yeah, somebody's got to Mark. Okay, so again, remember when your name is called, you unmute and you would say, if I was myself, you would say Meltzer votes yes. It's really very basic. Last name and oral vote. Thank you. All right, blank. Blank yes. Thank you, Brown Kennedy. Brown Kennedy votes yes. Thank you, Cameron. Cameron votes yes. Thank you. Cassell? Cassell votes yes. Thank you. Kali? Helena Kali? All right. Uh, Chang? Chang votes yes. Thank you. Chapman? Chapman votes yes. Thank you. Charcutian? Charcutian votes yes. Thank you. Cole? Cole votes yes. Thank you. Coleman? Coleman votes yes. Thank you. Corman? Corman votes yes. Thank you. Kuchia? Kuchia votes yes. Thank you. Curtis? Curtis votes yes. Thank you. Airman? Bruce Aaron. All right. Flores. Flores, yes. 
Thank you. Flynn, Flynn votes yes. Thank you. Forsberg? Forsberg votes yes. Thank you. Franker? Michael Franker? All right. Friedman? Friedman, yes. Thank you. Froman? Roman, yes. Thank you. Galloway? Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein? Paul Goldstein? <laughs> All right. Uh, Grant? Grant, yes. Thank you. Gupta? Uh, Kathleen Gupta. Okay. James. James, yes. Thanks. And uh, Joyce. Trisha. Joyce. All right. Uh, okay. Hey, votes yes. Thank you. Cano? No votes, yes. Thank you. Ketring? Ketring votes, yes. Thank you. Coppell? Uh, Joel Coppell or Koppel? I don't, I don't actually. You can correct me. Coppell, he usually is a dial in, so let me just double check. And by the okay. way, Paul Goldstein is here. He's having mic issues. I see him. Oh, okay. Um, Goldstein, do you mind uh, letting me know what you're Vote is real quick. Uh, it has to be oral to count for, so he's got to fix his. Um, okay. Fix audio. Try logging out and back in, Paul. Uh, keep going. Sorry, Mimi. All right, sure. Um, uh, Lamory. Lamory votes yes. Thank you. Lerner. Lerner votes yes. Thank you. Uh, Lewinson. Um, Lewinson excused. I apologize. Got it. Uh, Lynn? Bernard Lynn? All right. Colin Mahoney? Mahoney votes yes. Excellent. Uh, McHugh? Megan McHugh? All right. Tammy Meltzer. Meltzer votes yes. Thank you. My Hawk. My Hawk. Jeffrey. All right. Moore. Moore votes yes. Thank you. Mullen. Mullen votes yes. Thank you. Schneck. Schneck votes yes. Thank you. Star? Star votes yes. Thank you. Jimmy Song? Jimmy Song votes yes. Thank you. Vera Song? Vera Song votes yes. Thank you. Townley? Townley votes yes. Thank you. Weinstock? Uh, Judy Weinstock? All right. Uh, Z? Z, yes. Thank you. <laughs> you? You votes yes. Thank you. Zelter? Zelter votes yes. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. And we need to come back to. Um... Paul. <laughs> so the only thing Go. that I can think of right now, because he's the only one who hasn't, if he, Paul, can you? We'll do this orally uh, until you get your audio fixed. Can you do a thumbs up, thumbs down, <laughs> or hold up a sign, something so you can vote oh, so we have you Paul, for attendance? Paul, you can also call on the phone. Um, you can switch your audio to using the phone if the computer audio isn't working, um, or just call in straight up and then, um, you know, text Diana and we'll we'll move you over. But uh, 
and just leave yourself logged in so you can see the screen. Um, and for verification purposes, we see Paul Goldstein. It is Paul Goldstein. He did give a thumbs up. So with that, uh, we have quorum and uh, we are well ready to go into our elected officials. We'll welcome Senator Brian Kavanaugh, who's with us first for electeds and then reps afterwards. And Brian, to start 2022 off, we welcome you. We will tell you, you have eight minutes. You will be timed and any, uh, we'll have two minutes for Q&A. If you finish shorter than that, then you will have more time for Q&A from board members. So, and with that, take it away. You have to unmute yourself though, Brian. Oh no, Brian has audio issues. I can, oh, try again, Brian, if you can unmute yourself. Uh -oh. Rats. So I'm gonna ask Brian if you can follow the same directives we have for Paul and see if you can dial in so we can catch your audio. Because I don't see it. Or change your audio input. While he is working on getting that done. We can do our elected representatives because I do know that Hannah Wienerman is here and I know that Amy Vera is here. So from Congressman Nadler's office and from Assemblymember Yuleen's office, we can have them go prior so we can get Brian's audio fixed. So Mimi, if you'll send a note to Hannah to unmute herself and we'll have Hannah go and elected reps get three minutes. How are we doing, Mimi? Anna Wienerman from Congressman Jerry Nather's office. Good to Welcome, you. Anna. Hello. So, um, folks are able to sign up for uh, four free testing kits from the USPS um, announced by President Biden. The um, website went live last week. I know that um, we've heard from some constituents that folks were having some issues, especially for those like in apartment buildings. So we are well aware of the issue and we are working to uh, work with the Biden administration to clear up that. We actually just signed a letter today requesting a more equitable process for getting people in apartments and multiple dwelling settings. Um, testing kits um, when you sign on to the website. If you're having problems with it, there's two ways to rectify it though. Um, USPS created a, um, basically a service form page. So I'll put that in the link, uh, in the chat below the link to that. You're able to select addressing issues and then USPS has been able to assist with the pull down menu. The other option is to uh, call their hotline, which is 1-800-232-0233. I'll put that all in the chat. Um, two big infrastructure updates. So uh, the Biden administration announced the launch of the bridge replacement re rehabilitation, preservation, protection, and construction program. What it boils down to, boils down to is that $27 billion are being allocated to the states to fix bridges. In New York, $2 billion is being allocated. And more importantly, in CB1, that means a lot of the money is going to go to uh, Brooklyn Bridge restoration. Um, it's a priority for the state, so we're looking forward to that. Um, as information comes available, I will report back to the board. Um, the other thing is that Congressman Nather joined uh, Governor Hochul in um, announcing the feasibility study for the Interborough Express connecting um, passenger rail with between uh, Brooklyn and Queens. This is very important because it can coexist with the Cross Harbor Tunnel Project along a standing project in Congress, the Nadler's, um, that is currently being studied uh, through the Port Authority. So that's my time. Um, I will leave my information in the chat. Thank you. Dang, Hannah, we love the fact that that was like two minutes, not three. Thank you so much. Um, and we really appreciate your time. We would love to hear more about the securing of the Brooklyn Bridge, especially as it relates to the Brooklyn Bridge banks and our ability to have some public space and public use out of the areas below. So please stay tuned for us. Um, we're going to go to Amy Vera next for who is the next representative that is on. And then after that, we have three of our elected officials who we will welcome. And uh, in the meanwhile, I want to make sure that their audio is all set. Amy. 
Hi well, everyone, can you hear me? We can, welcome. Okay. Hi everyone, hope everyone's having a good night. Um, I'm gonna keep it short. Uh, I wanted to start it off by saying that my new colleague, Theo Perez, will be joining us tonight and he'll be staying on as I move to the next community board meeting. He is our new legislative liaison um, and he'll enter his information in the chat and y'all will get to know him as the year goes on. Um, so I want to also mention the 2022 people's budget on Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, the members of the Black, Puerto Rican, Hispanic, and Asian Legislative Caucus outlined the key priorities contained in the people's budget. <clears throat> the proposed budget we have assembled is a strong practical document that paves the way for long-term prosperity of every New Yorker, not just the very rich and very connected. Um, key budget proposals from the 2022 People's budget is the billionaire wealth tax, uh, the 10 billion revenue annually. Um, this yearly assessment on the speculative wealth of billionaires would target unrealized capital gains as a means to address our state's growing economic inequality. Then we have the Pied a Terre tax, which is $650 million revenue annually, the stock transfer tax, and then <clears throat> Establishing a living wage for New Yorkers, which urges our legislators to adopt a living wage for no less than $21 an hour, pay comparable with government employees holding similar non-professional job titles. And lastly, ending 24-hour home care worker shifts. Um, and then also as an update to the data disaggregation legislation, it was signed into law by Governor Hochul and we thank her and the other elected officials who contributed to this law and we hope to see good things come from it. So thank you everyone. Thank you very much, Amy. Very nice to have you here. And I think with that, uh, we are moving off to our elected officials. We have um, Senator Kavanaugh. We're gonna check back with him, see if he fixed his audio. And after Senator Kavanaugh, we have our fantastic brand new Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine and our fantastic new council member Chris Markey. So let's see, Senator Kavanaugh. Can you go to uh, Council Member Marte? I'm gonna, he's um, on the phone. I'm gonna get his number and, and pull him over. You got Senator it. Senator Kavanaugh. Uh, council Member Marte, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy 2022. I cannot tell you as a chair how excited I am to have you in office. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you for the introduction. I'm happy to be here. Uh, before I give my recap, I want to introduce my two CB1 reps, uh, Chloe Lynn and Max Deutsch. Uh, Chloe will be our point person, uh, but Max will work as her backup, and Chloe will also be our scheduler and special events manager. And so, um, any meetings that the community board or nonprofits want to have a hard meeting, you can go through Chloe to, to schedule. Um, but yeah, we're happy to be here. I will do a quick recap of what we've been up to in the first three weeks. Uh, the first week, I know this is a little bit outside of CB1, but we were able to get the first veto in over eight years. Uh, there is this intro, uh, intro 2443A, which would increase fines on uh, people living in joint live work quarters um, it, for artists. This came through with the Soho Noho rezoning as a separate legislation, and we were able to work with other elected officials and our mayor to um, veto this bill, which was amazing. It was something great that we all were unified and able to, you know, push her across the finish line. Um, in addition to that, we joined the Seaport Coalition to do a zoning challenge on 250. Um, Water Street, and we also attended the, the first of hopefully many working groups regarding the potential development at that site. Um, we also just closed uh, last this past weekend our participa participa participatory budgeting. Uh, we got over 100 submissions, which I believe was uh, the most in Manhattan, which is pretty great for just a few weeks here, and my team did a really great job on that, so thank you guys. Um, also, for nonprofits or any organization that wants to receive discretionary funding from our office, that applications are open until February 22nd. 
Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Chloe and our team or just email district1 at council.nyc.gov. Uh, yesterday, um, I was elected by my colleagues to co-chair the Manhattan delegation. It will be myself and Eric Botcher, who's just the council member northwest of us, who's replacing Corey Johnson. I think it's a big win for Lower Manhattan to have both of the co-chairs be from down here, which I think is a first in a really long time. Uh, some of the committees that I will be on in the city council are uh, Committee on Aging and also the Subcommittee on Senior Centers and Food and Security, Landmarks, Waterfront Resiliency, Parks, and Civil Rights. I feel like all these committees mean a lot to our district, so I'm happy that I was able to uh, be appointed in these committees that we can have an active and loud voice for residents of our district. Uh, earlier this month, I joined residents of the community board and FIDI to um, go to the SLA up in Harlem and asked them to reject the application for sleep no more. Sadly, they approved it, but with a lot of conditions and I would really like to thank the community board um, and residents of three Hanover place and nearby areas that really came out in force and really demanded for, for SLA to reject it. But I think um, it was a okay compromise with the conditions that we got. Um, some other news, uh, NYC Ferries just announced that you can take ferries from Collier's Hook or any other pier to Governor's Island. Um, as many people here know that Governor's Island is going to be open year round and having additional ferries, um, which is how people enjoy that magic, beautiful space, especially since we have limited green space in Lower Manhattan now that East River Park is under construction, uh, part of the resiliency project. Um, some other news just regarding that, we actually wrote a letter to EDC asking for more air monitors uh, for that construction site. Currently, they only have six, which is, I believe, inadequate. So uh, I asked for six more. Um, this Saturday, I'll be joining Neighbors United Below Canal um, for a rally to stop the demolition of the Manhattan Detention Complex and part of the Borough Base Jail. Uh, it will be Saturday at 11 on Center Street, right in front of the complex. And so, Hopefully everyone can attend and support um, that cause. I know CB1 wrote an amazing resolution. And I hope that it passes. Um, in addition, we're having a composting town hall February 9th. Uh, if you want to attend, please email compost at district1 um, at council.nyc.gov. Um, it will be great to see everyone there. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Wow, awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, for being our first elected uh, person to speak in January and being under five minutes. So I'm going to leave it up hands for board members. I have two questions for you, which I'll ask afterwards. Mark Emerson is the first hand up. So you are first, Mark. Mark, you have two minutes, no more. Unmute yourself, Mark. Am I muted? Yes, you are. Okay. Hey, Christopher, congratulations uh, on your win. Uh, I'm glad to hear that you're on waterfront. Uh, you can deal with waterfront issues. One of the uh, things the board has been dealing with for a while, and, and your predecessor was also big on this, and it's something that's like near and dear to me, is uh, the unfettered access to the Brooklyn Bridge Beach. Uh, is uh, that something you, you're going to continue to champion for us? Uh, Yes, definitely. Uh, we had a meeting um, with, with Tammy and other CB1 members, and we're we're definitely going to support it as strongly as possible. Oh, fantastic! That would be great if that can really, really come to fruition. And because uh, there's so much opposition to it from uh, from uh, from the city for various, uh, you know, ridiculous, uh, unfounded legal reasons. Uh, but uh, but if we can get that beach there, it would be fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marsh. Susan Cole, she has her hand up next. Susan, max of two minutes. Thank you. All I wanted to do is thank uh, Councilperson Marte for coming to the SLA with all of us. He was wonderful. He was just new on the job, but he was very supportive. So thank you for from the licensing committee and thank you from Hanover Square. You're welcome. I'm glad to join. Thank you, Susan. Joe Lerner, you're next. Hi, congratulations. Um, the participatory budgets, 
Um, where does it go from here? You've gotten some applications. What will you do? Will you notify people or what? I, I uh, submitted one for the library in Lower Manhattan. Yeah, so what happens next is that we submit it to the agencies, the appropriate agencies. So if you did a DOT request or a parks request, we send it to the agencies and they do a feasibility study uh, just to see how much it's going to cost, how long it's going to take. And that will probably take uh, two months. So in late March, we'll have all their information back and then we'll start a voting process where people uh, can vote on the applications that were approved by the agencies. And so we'll send you more details um, once that agency review process ends. Okay, thank, thank you. Good thank luck. You. Thank you. So I have two questions for you, for, uh, Council Member Marte. First of all, again, thank you for coming. One is we do have some composting in Lower Manhattan, but it is geographically restricted because it's down through the downtown Alliance. We did speak with um, New York City Sanitation and are actively looking for partners to be able to help us get composting north of Chamber Street for the rest of our district. So anything that you can do to help us secure that kind of connection for the Department of Sanitation would be highly appreciated. Sounds good. Uh, definitely follow up on that. And then, uh, secondly, if you would like, um, I would be happy to send any and all resolutions we've passed on the jail, which date back several, several years. We have long standing resolutions on this. So any help that we can get from the mayor's office um, to get engagement and transparency, uh, we greatly appreciate. Yeah, that would definitely help. And uh, one thing I want to just tell to the community board is that. Uh, we're going to take resolutions fairly seriously. Uh, we just did that with the Cliff, uh, Cliff Street application and the World Trade Center command moving into 80 John Street. We used uh, the conditions of that resolution for the CPC hearing. Today, we had another hearing with the NYPD and the mayor's office to create a point of agreement that those are the commitments that they have to uh, live by if they want to be good neighbors. Uh, for, uh, for community board one. So um, going forward, no matter how big or small any land use issue is, make sure that uh, they're put on the resolutions because we will use them as the guiding light for what we say at city planning and at city council hearings. And with that note, which sounds like a breath of fresh air for the community and the community board, um, I thank you very much and we will see you next month, if not sooner. Sounds great. See you all. Thank you. Um, we will either go Mark Levine or Brian Cavanaugh, whoever's got their audio fixed next. I think we'll go from Mark Levine because I see Mark I, audio. Hey, Mark. I need to send it to the uh, to the punch on the functioning audio. Okay. You did. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us for Community Board One. We are delighted to have you here. So thank you. Well, Mark. well, th th thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Tammy, for. Uh, your friendship and for your leadership here for CB1. I just want everyone to know how excited I am to work with your new council member who uh, is probably too modest to brag, but it's really a big deal. He actually won an election amongst the Manhattan council members to serve as co-chair. Uh, this is a big deal. It wasn't just an appointment. Um, and of course, the fact that he's co-chairing with, with uh, the neighbor to the north, uh, Councilmember Botcher, is, is it's really great for downtown, um, and uh, one more reason why I'm uh, looking forward to working with Chris on behalf of Manhattan. Um, I am just thrilled to be addressing you now for the first time as Borough President. I've been to CB1 uh, plenty of times over the years in my capacity as a council member and chair of the health committee, and I've always enjoyed it. But um, now I'm spending most of my days uh, as uh, Hanging out in CB1 at the municipal building, and when when it's safe to do so, I, I hope that means I can see many of you in person much more often. Well, this has been a difficult three and a half weeks uh, for all of us uh, as we started this new term and in this new year. Uh, the the whole surge of Omicron, which is now, thank goodness, abating. Though still, uh, we're still seeing uh, thousands and thousands of cases a day. Uh, the horrible string of tragedies, uh, 
the officers shot, uh, we lost a second one today. Officer Mora passed away. It's just heartbreaking. Uh, the horrible case of Michelle Lissago, who was pushed in Times Square. Uh, all of it is, is almost too much to bear. And, and uh, I hope that it gives us a determination to do everything we can to uh, make this city safer and fairer for all, whether it's public health or public safety. Uh, or frankly, the climate, uh, another issue which you're so vulnerable on here and, and CB1. Uh, these are priorities I've already started to move forward on. On the pandemic, uh, we've really prioritized getting access to rapid self-tests. We've gotten close to 10,000 for the borough and we've distributed a number um, here uh, in CB1 with Manhattan Youth, uh, also uh, with, with Councilmember Marte. Uh, we're looking to, to secure more and will uh, on, on behalf of, of lower Manhattan. Uh, and I'm continuing to stand up for the right balance of science uh, uh, as we get out of this difficult stage of the pandemic. On the, the public safety front, I led our 10 council members in Manhattan, including Councilmember Marte, in a letter to the MTA to uh, push them to begin to install subway uh, platform screen doors in our subway system. Uh, as other cities in Europe have already installed, as we have today at JFK with our air train, as a way to prevent uh, the horrible uh, pushing incidents, also people falling accidentally, uh, trespassing, uh, suicide attempts, and just dropping your cell phone onto the tracks. All of it can be prevented if we have these doors. And so we have the entire Manhattan Council delegation and myself united in pushing the MTA to start on this process. Um, I want to mention very quickly a few uh, more hyper local issues. Uh, I am excited to be going all in on the effort to reclaim public space around the Manhattan side of the Brooklyn Bridge, where acres and acres of public space are inaccessible, including uh, parkland being used for uh, by DOT. Uh, street space that's being used uh, for placard parking, um, un an unused flyaway overhead uh, on ramp, uh, inaccessible vaults under the Manhattan Bridge that used to be open and could be. But well, there's really an inspiring plan from the community to reclaim this space to bring it back to public use, uh, which I am uh, absolutely committed to. Uh, secondly, I know that placarded use is probably worse than CB1 than any other community board in New York City, maybe with the exception of downtown Brooklyn. Um, we've got some good plans on the table that need to be implemented. Uh, I'm with you on that fight. I certainly support um, former council member Levin's effort to have citizen reporting um, and generally a transition to an electronic system where abuse will be more difficult. Uh, finally, very quickly, as my time runs out, um, I know how concerned so many of you are with the plan for the jail next to Chinatown. And uh, while well, I, like many of you, absolutely agree that uh, Rikers Island is a stain on the conscience of the city and, and must be closed. I had a chance to visit it just a few weeks ago again, and conditions are still appalling. Um, now that I'm your borough president, now that I'm borough president, I'm really um, taking an opportunity to dig in deep for the plans um, in the Manhattan site. Uh, asking questions about budget and timeline and scale and um, impact on the surrounding neighborhood. And I would really like to engage with you, uh, CB1, uh, with you, uh, Tammy, um, and other relevant leaders on the board on this topic uh, as I begin to dig in deep uh, in my new role. So I think I went over time, but thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, I couldn't be more excited to partner with all of you. Oh, I, ha I have to mention that. My wonderful liaison to CB1, Andrew Chang, is here and continuing as part of our team. Uh, so I know you'll be excited to hear that as well. Um, we really have a, a wonderful team uh, in our office. You'll get to know many of them. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. We are excited to have Andrew stay with us. I think, I don't know if he's excited because we do know his cell phone and we can find him. <laughs> Um, you actually did perfect on time. We do five to eight minutes and then a couple questions. I know I see some hands up from before. 
If you have already spoken and do not need to ask our new president something, please put your hand down. But I will recognize Alice Blank, our fantastic vice chair, first. Hey, what's up? All right. You got that thing? Yeah, thumbs and goes. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Manhattan Borough President Levine, um, and welcome. It's terrific to see you, and it's actually terrific to hear you talk about the borough-based jail, something I wanted to bring up. I am vice chair of the C of CB1 and chair of the Environmental Protection Committee. So tonight, CB1, as you may know, will vote on a resolution urging Mayor Adams to put a pause on the imminent demolition of the existing Manhattan detention complex, part of which is a landmark eligible building, and to put a pause on the construction of a new approximately 290 foot high, 1.2 million square foot carceral tower at this site. CB1 is on record accepting the closing of Rikers Island and has long accepted the location of the Manhattan Detention Complex, the city jail, and the Metropolitan Correctional Center, a federal prison in the heart of our Civic Center Chinatown neighborhood. This call to pause is not a call to relocate the jails. Rather, it is a call for this new administration to create time in which to reevaluate what we have long believed to be a deeply flawed and incomplete plan. CB1 believes the current borough based jail plan at an estimated cost of $11 billion of taxpayers' money in no way addresses the root problems which afflict Rikers Island and the existing city jails. Without incorporating plans to address these issues and considering alternatives, there is no way to assess whether this enormous expenditure is the best use of public funds to advance the needed reforms in criminal and social justice. To date, almost none of the borough-based jail's ULERP recommendations put forth by your predecessor, Gail Brewer, have been met. The community engagement on this project has been woefully insufficient and opaque. Given the city is in the throes of this historic pandemic, it is essential to allow time for the city officials and the public to further review the borough based jail proposal. So tonight I'm asking to ask, I'd like to ask you whether we can count on your support to urge Mayor Adams for this pause. And uh, if additional, I will ask whether you could attend the rally mentioned by Council Member Marte this Saturday at the jail site. Well, Alice, it is great to see you and great to speak with you on this. And I, I talked about how I'm, I'm anxious to dive in deep on this project and that I have many, many questions pending. I would love to meet with you and the relevant leadership of CB1 as soon as possible to spend time talking through this. And we can dive into some of the questions you raised. I will ask um, Andrew to maybe drop some contact info in the chat if you don't already have it. Uh, let's schedule it as soon as possible. Uh, Council member Marta and I talk almost every day, but if, if you want to loop him in on that meeting as well, that would be great. Uh, but either way, let, let's find time um, when we're not rushed like we are right now to, sure. to dig in deep. I would be happy to have that conversation with you as soon as possible. You'll hear from yes, us. Thank in you. Morning. No problem. Thank All you, right. Tammy. Thank you, Alice. Welcome. Rosa, Mariama, and Susan, if your hand is still up. Let's try and go as quickly as we can because the time is running. Um, so Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine, thank you so much um, for your support for having a public park and community park underneath the Brooklyn Bridge. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you, Rosa. <laughs> um, great, 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 great. Thank you for your leadership on this issue. Thank you. Uh, I mean, we just think that with your support and guidance, um, we're going to get there. So uh, we are so beyond happy. And I also want to especially thank you for making time in your schedule to come with us um, to discuss the whole issue with the Smith Houses and Murray Bertram later this week um, as related to the park as well. So just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate appreciate it, Rosa. Excited to work with you in the months ahead on this project. It's a big priority for me too. Mariama. There you go. Hi, Borough President Levine. Sorry to have my camera on. I broke my laptop. I have to send it to the manufacturer. Anyway, my question is far less consequential. Our last Borough President was looking into whether or not we were going to be reimbursed for the owls that we had to buy during the pandemic um, in order to satisfy the um, hybrid meetings and now only uh, Zoom or WebEx meetings. And I was wondering if maybe you had an update on that. Sorry, to reimburse for the for the what, Mariama? 
the owls, the cameras and um, and speakers that we had to purchase in order to be able ah, to so, have so, hybrid okay. meetings? Yes. Um, I don't have an answer for you on that, but I will get you one. And either way, if it's not settled, we'll fight for it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, always great to hear your voice, Mariama. And with Yours that, too. take care, be safe. You too. And with that, we thank you very much, Manhattan Borough President, for all that you do. Welcome to the chair. Welcome to uh, Community Board One. And the offer is always open. We would be happy to walk you around our district so you can learn all the ins and outs of the. We're going to do that. I can't wait. Warmer weather. Indeed. Thanks, right. everybody. Be well. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Kavanaugh, you are up. And please reset the timer for Senator Kavanaugh. Okay, I'm going to help with the unmuting of Senator Kavanaugh. Just one moment. Scroll down. Our panelist session is quite full. Okay. Star six will unmute you, Senator Kavanaugh. Here we go. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, this is very exciting. So I vote happy to be here and happy to have my audio working. Um, so, uh, you know, we just began a new legislative session a couple of weeks ago. Uh, a lot going on. Uh, the, you know, one of the big uh, items of the initial part of the session is the governor's executive budget, which was announced uh, a week ago and uh, will be the subject of very intense negotiations. And our state budget, as many of you know, is due uh, by March 31st, um, just some highlights, uh, there, uh, you know, the, it is a total proposed budget of 216 billion dollars. That's like a 1 and a half percent increase over uh, the current year. Uh, it includes, uh, you know, significant uh, investments that we're able to do because of some progressive tax increases we did last year, including, uh, an 8% increase in the state's uh, commitment to public schools in New York and throughout the state. Uh, that is a that is part of a three year effort to uh, phase in uh, the uh, 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 our view of what is necessary under the campaign for fiscal equity lawsuit many years ago. The state has been under has been shortchanging schools in New York uh, City and other high need districts for a long time. So we are you know finally addressing that. Uh, that was big news last year, but it's you know it's continuing to in, uh, increase the infusion of aid. Uh, this year, um, the, uh, just to mention a few other things, uh, the, uh, try, I'm trying to just summarize, trying to hit a few highlights here, uh, but there's a lot of very good news on the, on the energy and environment side. Uh, we have uh, $500 million for clean water infrastructure. This is again, a continuing effort to get, uh, money out there necessary to do capital, uh, improvements that will improve uh, water quality. Uh, that's also on top of, I, I was, I was happy to join, uh, Senator Schumer last month on announcing that the infrastructure bill has a very large uh, amount of money for eliminating lead uh, pipes. Uh, we also have a uh, proposed increase in the environmental protection fund of, by 33%. It normally is 300 million, it'd be $400 million. And the Environmental Bond Act, which is something that goes to the voters, we are proposing a $4 billion in capital spending on an Environmental Bond Act that would be subject to the approval of the voters. Uh, so uh, again, that and many other things uh, on the on the environmental side are you know a good start to those conversations. Uh, the uh, housing uh, there there's the expense budget, uh, which is you know somewhat routine, but this is the, the big thing in housing on the budget side this year is the uh, it is the beginning of a new five year capital plan uh, for the state uh, for housing costs. Um, the Governor, the, you know, previously this has been a kind of somewhat uh, opaque process, but the governor had agreed uh, pursuant to some legislation that uh, we had put out last year that they would be transparent on this and do it as a, you know, propose the five-year plan with the executive budget with the goal of having a very public process and transparent process and adopting it by March 31st. Uh, the five-year capital plan as proposed by the executive is a four and a half billion dollar infusion of capital spending for housing. That is uh, two billion dollars more than the previous five year plan uh, pr proposed five years ago. Uh, and uh, you know, there's lots of other good uh, stuff in the in the housing space, which I will have opportunity to talk about in the in the near future. Um, 
The just a couple other things in housing. We began our year uh, with a public hearing jointly with the Judiciary Committee and the Housing Committee, which I chair, on good cause eviction. Uh, we did that on January 7th. We had uh, 41 people testified in person. Many more submitted testimony in writing. The video of that, uh, we also had you know, about two dozen senators participate. The video of that is available on the Senate website, as is all of the testimony uh, written that was submitted. Uh, and again, that's a Good cause eviction is the idea that landlords cannot evict people without cause. For example, just if your lease is up or, uh, you know, some other desire of the landlord to put another tenant in there, they need cause to push people out of their homes. Uh, on uh, the uh, people know that most people probably know that the eviction moratorium and the foreclosure moratorium expired on January 15th. I think there's a decent case that the, the public health situation would have warranted continuing that, uh, but there was not a consensus to do that. The good news is that the emergency rental assistance program, which I uh, you know, wrote significant parts of, including the eviction protections that come with people applying to that program. So if people have hardships now, their best uh, protection comes from submitting an application to the emergency rental assistance program. Uh, the governor had closed that process back in the fall. Uh, it was reopened a couple of weeks ago. And so again, the, the portal is available. People should apply if necessary. On that note, we do need substantial more, substantially more funding for that program. Uh, there's a process by which the federal government is supposed to reallocate money to uh, states with high need. New York certainly should qualify. And I am pushing for $3 billion of additional money. Uh, and I'm committed to trying to do that through the state budget process, but obviously we really do need federal help on that. Um, on the homeowner side, the Homeowner Assistance Fund uh, is a program that is intended to help people who are experiencing hardship paying homeowner costs. Uh, that opened, the application process opened January 3rd. We held, we held a public forum, kind of an info session. I did it jointly with Liz Crew to get the word out on that. Uh, that program also may well run out of money by the time, you know, with all the tremendous need is available. So people should apply. It's nyhomeownerfund.org, or you can go to the state housing agency and there's a link. Um, it's also become a, uh, a bit of a tradition in the Senate to do voting reform on day one. In 2019, when we first took the majority, we did all these huge kind of transformative uh, pieces of legislation. Uh, but there's still a lot more work to do to make sure our laws are uh, robust and welcoming of voters. We focused particularly this year on absentee balloting, which we've, of course, become more and more aware of the need uh, and the value of that during pandemic. Uh, we did a bill of mine in the package that will reduce the uh, amount of time, uh, will basically extend the deadline to register to vote to the what is the constitutional minimum. That has become more important because the voters, unfortunately, on election day voted down a same day res registration change that would have allowed people to register up to and including election day. Um, I think we should revisit that and try to get approval from the voters for that in the future election. But in the meantime, this bill would allow election to allow people to register within 10 days of an election. And I would just note that we have early voting starting 12 days after election. So this would effectively give you same day registration for the first couple of days of early voting. And I think it would be a major reform. We did pass it in the Senate and we're hoping the assembly will take up that bill along with the rest of the package. A few quick updates on the community. I see the clock is running, uh, you know, on five World Trade Center. This has already been mentioned, uh, but we had a forum uh, with all the local elected officials and this board. Uh, to talk particularly about uh, the affordability issues there. Uh, the state agencies, I think it was a good productive dialogue. State agencies promised to follow up and continue the dialogue. And so we are arranging that follow-up meeting along with a list of what we view as uh, outstanding questions uh, to those agencies. Uh, we also, uh, I think uh, Chris Marte, who I will and I am also very happy to work, looking forward to working with, as well as our borough president, our new borough president. Uh, but we also had uh, convened the first meeting of the 250 Water Street Group, also with this board and with the electeds to talk about uh, the environmental uh, impacts of work going on on that site. And, you know, on, on an ongoing basis, we expect to talk about other, uh, you know, other impacts of the construction process. And I see my time is up just to say, I'm, I've said this, I think, at the last board meeting. I'm also very enthusiastic about the Brooklyn Bridge Manhattan Project and will join the tour uh, later in the week. And um, the, uh, I, think I'll, I think I'll stop there just to respect the clock, but uh, happy to take questions if anyone hasn't. 
Awesome. I appreciate that. And thank you very much. That clock is really, I think, going to be our lifesaver on CB1 full board meetings. Um, all I right. think it's a beautiful thing, even though it cut me off. It, oh, well, <laughs> I didn't mute. Yeah. So we're doing well. Yep. Um, okay. don't, do I have any hands up for Senator Kavanaugh? He covered a lot of stuff, and I know there's stuff that sink in. Um, please make sure Rosa Chang has her hand up. And after Rosa, I think we will uh, close the the speaker sessions. Rosa, you're on. Thank you so much, Senator Kavanaugh. I want to just thank you and everybody in your office for helping us deal with the situation that's ongoing right now with Murray Bertram and Smith Houses and that area underneath the bridge. So I just wanted to thank you. Look forward to seeing you soon and um, resolving that issue. And thank you for your support of the park. Thank you very much. And we've also discussed it with the uh, tenant leaders at uh, Smith Houses as well. So we're looking forward, looking forward to a further conversation later this week. Thank you. Perfect. And with that, we thank you, Senator Kavanaugh. As I said, we thank you to all of our elected. Um, let's put the agenda back up and let's move on with the community board business. I am super excited. All right. So, Mariana James, you are next with the treasurer's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, the quarter was pretty uneventful. I don't know if you guys have it in front of you or that I see it on the screen. So, you'll see that there's only a difference of about $3,500 between last quarter and this quarter. And that if you look at our total budget of $261,000, having already only spent $114,000 um, thus far, we are well on schedule to be still in the black at the end of the year. Um, there are a couple of bills that are still out. That's why you'll see a small discrepancy there between what was spent last quarter and what was spent this quarter. Because of the pandemic, the agency that um, handles those bills had temporarily closed when we had a spike um, with the COVID rates, but they have now reopened. And so those bills should be on their way to Lucy and we will um, you know, acknowledge them next quarter. Questions? All right, thank you. Awesome, Mariama. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Lucian, your district manager's report, please. Wonderful. Hello, everyone. I'm Lucian Reynolds. I'm the district manager of Manhattan Community Board One. Great to see everybody here at the end of January. I'm also joined by my son Gino, who's by my side. You may hear him a little bit. Um, so just getting started. It's been a busy month as the office staff discovers. All of our new points of contact across the various city agencies and representatives offices. Um, it really is a, a very interesting time. It's it's like everything was reset, and uh, we're we're finding you know people that we knew would one place are moving to other places, and um, you know as it settles down, um, we'll be able to engage with city agencies, authorities, and elected offices um, with the same um, consistency and effectiveness. Um, but we're just, you know, really trying to kind of reestablish um, the order of things as it goes um, from uh, agency to agency. Um, so to that to that effect, I'm working with the office of the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, Bragg, to schedule a time for Mr. Bragg or a senior person on the staff to come speak with the board about his policy revision. So stay tuned for that. We're hoping to have uh, some time in February, and um, I know that question and answer is going to be very important. So working to, to make that happen. Earlier this week, all the Manhattan district managers met with the borough president, Levine, to discuss community board needs from the perspective of staff. I'm happy to say that as a former member of CB12, he understood our needs and promised to fight for our funding this upcoming fiscal year. Um, as you know, uh, the mayor's hinted at budget cuts. Um, we did not uh, go unscathed the last uh, series of budget cuts. Um, my argument is that community board funding uh, is almost a rounding error um, when compared to uh, many of the other city agencies um, that will be uh, having their funding adjusted. So um, it really doesn't make much sense to bleed us um, as a part of a budget cut since what we do is really not replaceable by any other city function. Two weeks ago, the district managers met with the commissioner of the mayor's uh, community affairs unit. Um, that's another district manager level meeting. We were very hopeful as simply sitting down with us is already a 180 degree turn from the last administration. 
So hopefully we'll have more news to report in the near future on this. Um, but they did promise a different paradigm uh, in, in engagement. So as the pieces fall in place and they are all staffed up, um, we'll put that to the test and um, you know uh, really have a, a an honest read and whether or not that's true. So with that, uh, Chair Meltzer, I uh, give the floor back to you. Thank you so much for the time. Okay, let's keep going and we're rocking and rolling into my chair report. Um, it's been a really busy week for the news. So the first thing I want to say is um, we recognize for NYPD the service that they do and it's very sad beyond for all of NYPD, the officers, their families and all the people who knew and loved them. So remember to stay safe out there, be alert. Um, we are a district that has all of many different Enforcement services and lots of subway connections to all around the city. So we'll move from there. Next slide. Okay. What is the community board? You know, there's a lot of conversations that we have about who we are and what we do. I love the photo on the top right taken from the patch. Um, and I think it's awfully timely based on the conversation. That is years ago where we overwhelmingly voted against the city's plan for 125 White Street at the time. So take a look, that is pre-mask, that is pre-pandemic, that is the community board doing what we do and what are we do and what do we do? We are advocates. We are advocates, we are actually part of government. So while we are community-based, we are part of the government. Our role is to advocate. We may absolutely reject an idea like we have here like we have with open restaurants, like we do on SLA in many, many ways and spaces and times. But the most important thing from my perspective as a chair and knowing that we are part of city government is that if something passes that we don't like, we still continue to fight. We don't say, well, we said no, we don't wanna talk anymore about it. The work that we did on the open restaurants shows really well what the part of community boards that's not well recognized. And it's ensuring that we have a seat at the table. With our new elected officials, we really will have a seat at the table. It feels different already from day one, and we're only here on the 25th of January. We wanna make sure we are part of the conversation so we can consistently say, no, we said no, but if this has to come to pass, here are the things that we need it to be. Um, so, we are here as the safeguards for what works best for our community. Ensuring that we know what we're saying before we get to this meeting means that I hope that every board member, when Lucy sends out the reminder, clicks the link and looks at any of the draft resolutions before we get here. And that's my note about who we are and where is the chair. So, when I get lots of feedback, that lovely thing, thank you to Instagram and all those lovely people who sent that to me, what I hear when I'm being yelled at, whether it's by text, by phone, by email is everybody caring loudly at me. And I appreciate all the advocacy, whether or not it's something I agree with doesn't make a difference because we represent everybody in the community. So no matter who you are, no matter what you have to say, when it gets to the full board, it's a majority vote and that's it. It either passes or it doesn't. So please don't apologize for your opinions. Please keep them coming. And that goes to the new board members as well. So here's all the fun places I've been since then. And one of the things that I wanna say is that we started a new thing because we are still virtual called Chat and Chew with the Chair. We did it in January as a cocktail hour. February will be as a, a lunchtime. It's basically a Zoom. It is not a business meeting. There's no business conducted. You stop by, you had a question, you had a comment, you weren't sure. I'll be there for an hour a month just to stop by. In an ideal world when we're in person, we have these conversations coming and going in between meetings. Until that time, I still want to make sure that there's an opportunity to build rapport and to have some of the newer board members meet some of the older board members to do some institutional knowledge connections. And at the bottom of this, in terms of advocacy, we cannot let the day pass without saying thank you to Sheldon Silver. Um, he really, we would not have many of the schools built in Lower Manhattan that serve our children. We would not have many of the other things that we enjoy in Lower Manhattan 
no matter what has happened with the gentleman, you cannot deny the benefits that community board one um, reaped from his advocacy for his constituency. So next slide. Looking ahead. Okay. Um, Borough-based jails, I hope that we see as many people who can show up on Saturday it would be great to the rally. If you are interested in the information, we will have it in the office. We set up a working group for public restrooms, hoping that we can do some advocacy work on that looking ahead. Um, Battery Conservancy board meeting is coming up soon, as well as Downtown Alliance, the Hudson River Park Advisory Council, and Chat and Chew on the 11th. Chinese New Year comes up soon on the 7th. Uh, BBJ returns to land use, harbor school, pool, and gym to youth and ed. And incredibly important when we're talking resiliency is to go to EPC and here all community boards will be invited to hear what is potential from the feasibility study from the US Army Corps of Engineers. Um, the office is closed on the 21st. If you send an email, I'm telling you past noon the Friday before, don't guarantee or complain that you didn't get an answer because they're off on Monday. All right, in the works, we are waiting to hear back from the Department of Transportation who has said that they will get back to us about what potential possibilities exist. We are waiting to hear the timeline. I'm so delighted to hear our council person and Mark Levine talk about the public space and resiliency projects. It's sort of inconceivable to us that there's been no holistic timeline looking at how the east side is closing their parks and then you will lose access to a large amount of the battery and all of Wagner for two years. I mean, it, okay. Um, and congestion pricing, the panel has not been appointed that we have seen. We want our representation to make sure that our voices are definitely heard. And please note, we are in the process of the legal actions and the rule setting before the new process begins at the mid to three quarter point of this year for DOT for open restaurants. Next slide. Okay, so Chinese New Year is this weekend. I wanna point out, we started with the NYPD, but it cannot go without saying the rise of hate crimes all over New York City, particularly in, in our area and our district directed towards the Chinese community. So. Here's a great opportunity for you to be involved in our local museum at the Chinese Institute. No, they don't know that I'm saying this, so they might be a bit surprised. But, you know, again, we want to celebrate and support our neighbors and our constituents. So enjoy the landscape, support small businesses and our museums, take care of yourself. Without this, we cannot do the work. Next slide. Oh, I'm missing one. I'm missing a slide. Can we pop the picture? That's all there is, Tammy. Jen's slide. So I will pop a picture if I can, if we can get it. For those who do not know, our incredible um, consultant, Jen Maldonado, resigned and her last day was Friday. She did send a goodbye note to the board. And I have a slide, I think it's unfortunately my bad for it being missing. She was a great asset to the community board. She spent three years with us. We are incredibly proud of her that she moves on and upwards to a new position in her career, um, but she will be sorely, sorely missed. So I ask that you celebrate Jen, say thank you to Jen, we'll forward any notes that you'd like to do. And uh, be patient as the office now picks up another full role sharing amongst the three of them. Okay. With that, I end my chair report. Let's uh, take a look at the resolution for impacts of local law 114, and then we'll do the borough based jails and we'll move on from there. Do you think we can pull up the therefore be it? Res there we go. Thank you. Okay, the open restaurants program is something that we have passed many resolutions on each committee did review of it in Q4 of 2021 and submitted comments and feedback for the positive rulemaking. So we can have a seat at the table as DOT moves ahead. So 
this is a very large resolution. I am looking for hands up, but I am hoping that everybody has read it and looks through because we're not going one by one by one in here. Um, as we slowly scroll up, I see that Pat has her hand up. You know, the first sentence where it's about the transparency that it's open on the side. Yes. It says, it says something about we do not want it to be transparent. Isn't that wrong? We want it to be transparent. We do. Uh, that could be a typo. Thank you for catching that. Let's go up and where see. is it? Oh, stop. They uh, have sides that are not see through. Is that right? I don't you want to say have sides that are see through? See under structure is the first bullet point. I, I think the path that says have slides that are not see if they uh, have Justine, slides. Justine, right? Justine, hands up, two minutes a person, we go back and forth. But is that correct? Have sides that are not see through? They're supposed to be solid up to three and a half feet and then see through beyond that. So we can redo the wording on that that yeah. says that have sides that are not see through, that are not more than three and a half feet high. Three and a half feet high. And that they yeah. are see and that anything above that is transparent so that drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians can have a line of sight. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's better. Thank you, very much. Thank you for catching that, Pat. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Uh, Justine's hand is down. Jeff Galloway. I'm still confused on that point. So we want them to be not see through at the bottom. That's Correct. something that we're asking for. I, I thought we were asking for them to be <clears throat> transparent, but if they are, it was see through, they shouldn't be any more than three and a half feet high. Correct. That is That's the way what it says. Yes, that is the way it will be clarified. Um, Di and since Diana's doing it on a PDF at the moment, she oh, can I see, I see. Okay, all right. I may be able to annotate it, or you know, the speaker may be able to annotate it. Um, but yes, that's, that's fine. I'm just trying to clarify what you. Yeah, yeah, I made a note on the Google Doc to clarify, and I'll go back to the audio. Okay, thank you, Justine. Just what Jeff said. Um, if they have sides that are not see through, then but that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Seeing no further hands, we do not need to roll call this because we've already roll called for attendance for the minutes. Now, please understand if you were not here for the minutes, then you must audio vote with your name to be counted for attendance. Because attendance is now taken with the minutes. So with that, Mimi, I'm going to say call the question. I just need a second. Second. I'll second. Perfect. Let's rock, Mimi. From any uh, any abstentions? Only abstains. Okay. Ta excuse me. Townley votes no. Okay. Townley no. Respectfully, blank votes no. Right. You uh, votes no as well. That's you also? Yes. Correct. All right. Maybe. So uh, Mahoney, abstain, Townley, Blank, and you are opposed. Wh who is that? I'm sorry. Uh, McHugh, I had tech issues during the roll call. So is, was that the okay. instruction to vote, verbally vote? And I vote yes. Thank you very much. You vote yes. All right. Hol Holman votes no as well. Thank you. Zelter abstains. Joyce also abstains. Right. Kennedy abstains. Keep in mind, I'm going to say this as Susan Cole says this oftentimes. That if you say nothing, you have nothing to say when it comes to rulemaking. Tim, I just don't agree with that. Just that that's nice for you to say, but I don't agree with it. And I think it biases some of the voting. You can say no or you can abstain, but you know, the ideal goal would be a no or yes. I mean, go where you are. 
Mimi, Mahoney will change his vote to no then. Kucha votes no. Forsberg votes no. Gorman votes no. Mullen votes no. Any recusals? Amber Russo votes no. Bell recuses. Werner votes no. No. Learn about no. I heard you. Right. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Snack votes no. Where are we now? Uh, I don't know. I haven't. I'm just writing it all down. I haven't put it in the spreadsheet yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, right now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's twelve oppose, three abstain one recusal and um a, a bonus yes uh, from McHugh. gotcha uh i think joel needs to be unmuted joel i think he's on joel hold. in the attendees find out So you know his number. Can you check to see if he's in there? He's there. I'll check, thank you. Uh, we'll come back to Joel because I know he's there somewhere. With that note, I believe the motion passes. I requested to unmute him. I don't know if he is do he knows what he's doing. I'm here, so I voted him. Joel voted no. Okay, so everybody's orally on. This is this is Liz Lamory. This the call. Did you call Liz Lamory? Uh, it was an affirmation vote because we did it by uh, we already called independence earlier. Oh, okay, no worries. Okay, thank you. All right, let's move on to the borough based jails. Okay, again, everyone should have been able to see this through the links that were sent out. And I'm not going to read all of the infinite fine points. Let's see if there's any hands up. Any questions? Hearing no questions. I have a question. Thank Second. you. Second. Okay, Mimi, take it away. <clears throat> One sec. Oh, sorry. Any abstentions? Any oppose? Any recusals? Gupta recuses. All right. We're... Sorry, I don't actually know. Okay, um, you, Kathy, so it's not uh, echoey. Thank you. All right, I think we're good there. Okay. All righty. Um, in essence, for time, let's go back to the agenda. Is there Thank you. Um, we have task force, working group, and appointments. Uh, so we have many things. And just to top start 2022 off, we are members as a community board. You automatic there is an automatic inclusion in the following organizations, uh, the Battery Conservancy, the Hudson River Park Advisory Council, 
the Downtown Alliance. Um, we've had a test and trace task force working group from the borough president's office that uh, we've had members serve on, and we are now working on a initiative with um, as a working group with public restrooms with CB5. We will post everyone who is anywhere uh, and Governor's Island, which uh, as well, and Five World Trade Center and the borough based jail NAC. Anybody who serves on any of the committees that are set up by either the council person or the borough president will post on our website this year. So it's pretty clear and everybody knows. And with that, I close my report and I close executive committee. Let's move to the next committee. Oh, there's your slide, Tammy. Oh, no, where's where's Jen's picture? There's no picture. We'll have to circle back on that one. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Ta oh, uh, Tammy, I have a question. I couldn't hear anything. The, the vote on the local law was what was 20, the vote? 2119 passed by one. 21 yes 19 no wow okay and then the uh, and then the jail passed unanimously yes okay thanks okay moving on youth and ed trisha hello everybody um so we have we have two resolutions i only see one in the packet um does everybody see both let me go back and take a look. Okay. And our resolutions on the protocols of COVID, not on the test kits. I see both in the packet. Okay, great. It, there, there's just one document, but the document contains both. Oh, yeah. that's good to know. So you have to scroll down. Thank you. I haven't seen it that way before, Rosa. I appreciate that. Um, Okay, great. Um, this is, um, well, we can, well, I can do them one at a time. Um, so the uh, first one is for that Bob brought to us um, is the need for more recreation space in lower Manhattan. Um, I want to make it clear that it's not in place of the advocating for the PS 150 gym. We are going to do a separate uh, resolution for that in February. Um, and, uh, but it may also be that the gym for 150 um, is located in five world trade. It might be that, you know, the gym we're advocating for will serve the school. I just wanted to make sure that we had opportunities for just, you know, for advocating for uh, gyms on their own as well. So we decided to make this for recreation space because there is a tremendous opportunity at this location um, for way more than just a gym, which would be you know, fantastic for lower Manhattan. We are on the brink of having all the resiliency construction start. Um, we are very short on, on recreation space uh, in this neighborhood as everybody knows, especially on the east side and in FIDI. So uh, this, you know, it's pretty self explanatory, but if anybody has any questions, let me know. I see two hands up. We'll go Andrew and then Jeff. Not a question, just a clarification. Um, I, I think it's obvious, but just to point out in this resolution, we're primarily talking about indoor community uh, recreational space. Yes, thanks, Andrew. Um, and my, my point is really just sort of a Actual, I think the resolution is is good, but the last whereas uh, states that Wagner Park will be under construction for the next five years, uh, at least according to the Battery Park City Authority, it's the next two years. Although I think it would probably be accurate to say that significant portions of the parkland in Battery Park City will likely be under construction for the next five years because there's the North Plan as well, which is likely to be taking. Rockefeller Park um, out of circulation. So if you want to use the five years, uh, you, you could word it like that. Uh, but if it's limited to Wagner Park, it's just the next two years. Thanks, Jeff. You know, I'm I'm fine to take out the years. I, I'm fine to say in the coming years. Fine. Um, really, fine. for the purposes of this resolution, as Andrew said, it's mostly for indoor space. It's about the fact that, you know, 
outdoor space will have to become indoor space. Yeah. And I think that's the point of it. So, you know, I think we can let go of the specific nature of the five. Okay. Uh, after, okay, so Gerald, Rosa, Richard, Bob, and then back to Andrew, if you still have something. We're gonna keep everybody down to two minutes. And remember, there's no comment back and forth. It's just, you go and Trisha comes back for you. Gerald, Rosa, Richard, and Bob. Yeah, hi, Trisha. Uh, just a quick question is the idea here um, that this community center, this, this field house gym be um, free to the public or would there be fees involved? And is that something that you would want to add into the, uh, therefore be it resolved? At this point, the structure is not let yet fleshed out. I mean, it's at the infant stages, but what we've learned from the past is that we, if we don't throw our hat in the ring, while the amenity community amenities that was required in this particular space um, are being even, you know, considered that oftentimes uh, were overlooked. And so what this really is, is saying that it's just saying that we really do need space. We would like to be considered for um, the community space that's going to be offered as part of this development. Okay, next. And Bob, can you mute yourself? Is that me? That's you. Okay, me? Yeah. Uh, folks, this is, we may, I shouldn't say this publicly, but may not be successful, but you got to try. And the community needs a full scale frontal attack on the need for recreation space for our kids. Tricia has worked on this for a long time in our schools, and the neighborhood's just going to grow. And finally, the Little League, Soccer League, Manhattan Youth, other things have created development here and people want to live here but it would be nice to give back some amenity so i am writing a personal letter on this also and i'm copying saul at the uh seaport copying bj over at the um uh, at, at, at battery park city authority and there was some talk about that parking lot downtown, right across from the new 150. That I forget what it's called. That 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 that, that parking, that weird parking lot where you go around in circles, could easily contain something. So we need to do some comprehensive planning. But it would be great if Five World Trade put something in there. And to just say it's not opposed to public housing, uh, affordable housing, or senior centers, it's a big, it's the World Trade Center. Bob, your, yeah. time, your time is up, my dear. Let me go. Thank you. Some. Thank you, Tim. Rosa, I apologize. Rosa and Richard, in that order. Okay, thank you. Um, on the six, whereas where um, it specifically calls that the in, that it included approximately sixty thousand square feet of space, um, I'm wondering if we can take out the specificity because I don't want us to be aiming too low. Um, mm -hmm. I I actually think that we should be asking for in excess of a hundred thousand square feet at minimum, and if we say sixty, then you know we're going to get negotiated down to thirty. So, so rather than saying that, um, aim higher. That that would be my only um, request. Uh, Tricia, uh, how do you does that match with where the community? I know there was a large discussion on this. If it is that something that matches where the committee was going? Well, my only concern with that is that we've never been able to get this much space ever right and if we don't if we don't say a number 
then what we're likely to get is the $15,000 digital center that we got at 346 yeah. Broadway. So I am concerned. I mean, I can say more than in excess of, um, we can even go higher with the number if we're sure it's there. I'm just afraid of underdoing this in terms of letting you know what our expectations are. Okay. Can we say in excess of 100,000? If we know that's the case, I don't personally know that that's the case. If we, we know that there is at least 60,000, which is why it's included. But if, if Rosa, listen, if you know that there's 100,000, I'm happy to change it. I just didn't want to say something that wasn't true. I, I don't know what it is um, because it's just lines on paper right now and, and numbers in an Excel chart. But I think that if we have a goal of 100,000, then, um, then we will end up more likely with a number our community could actually work with and live with. Um, but I, I think honestly, 60,000 for all of the functionality that we're talking about, like what we want from this community facility space is sort of small. So I, I how think. How do you feel about that? Uh, uh, can I speak? Yeah, so he had just written it, so I was including him in the response, but that's fine, Susan, sure. I agree with Rosa. I think you ask that there's nothing wrong with the ask and you need the space. I I would hate to shortchange us. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Are you done, Susan? Yes. Richard Corman, you're next. Yeah, so I, I'm a, a little I guess I'm still a little confused as to what we're saying here uh, in terms of what we're asking for. Uh, first, my first question is, are we saying that the community space, that, that it's the position of this board, that the community space that they have proposed, which I believe was whatever it was, I forget the, the number, um, should be a recreation space and nothing else? That's how, what it should be. There shouldn't be any senior center or any other possible use of community space because this is where we have opted to put our community uh, request in uh, a recreation space. Is that what we're saying? So that's my first question. My second question is um, kind of back to what Gerald was saying because now I'm not sure after Bob, are, is this to be for schools and kids or is this a public gym for the community is this a gym that would be uh another equinox or another asphalt green what are we trying to do here uh it's just not clear when i when i when i read this thing and i guess the last comment is and, and i don't i don't have an answer to this uh you, you all I'm sure you all know I'm part of the coalition for 100% affordable housing at Five World Trade, and um, I don't necessarily think that this is in contradiction to that. I don't, I can't read it, but of course I have a caution about it, and I don't want to do anything that's going to prevent us from achieving that objective, which this board has approved uh, uh, ahead of this. So if there's anything in here. That's going to inter interfere with that, then I would have to say no. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Um, can you, Trisha, answer his question about it? Does the resolution, I, I think the answer is yes, because the resolution does uh, slide to taking all of what has been, quote unquote, given to the community or whatever space is and the conversations as directed for that. Unless I'm reading it wrong. No, that is, I mean, th these, when we, when we do resolutions at this stage, they're always a little more vague than they could be because we are getting ahead of any sort of structure that exists. I mean, this was a very loose proposal. Um, I understood it to be 60,000 square feet, what they had in it. I don't even know the footplate of the building. So until we have that information, it's harder to get really specific. I personally, we did discuss it not all being youth recreation uh, for the community, but being the youth committee, of course, that's going to be our focus. Um, but I think that, you know, Bob would probably, this is, again, he brought this to us and I, I would 
love for him to answer those couple questions of Richard's. Sure, and I could do that. The answer is we just want to get to the dance here and it gets shaken out in negotiations. And because I've been a part of a couple of these projects, Paul Goldstein could comment on it. You know, when we first were told that 120 Warren was going to be 20,000, no, 7,000 square feet for the community center, and Capaccio threw him out of the room. So we're now just stating what the community need is. And that will not impact, if they say to us, EDC says to us, LMDC says, it, well, folks, you're going to get all affordable housing and we're only going to give you a 20,000 square foot gym. We're going to give you a 20,000 square foot community cent uh, senior center. They're going to come back and say, I don't think it's at this stage, it's really that important to we just got to get into the dance and pass the resolution. And I when the negotiations come, Bob, that will be a second go round. I'm going to cut you off, Bob. Thank um, you, Tammy. You're welcome. I apologize. Richard, you're good. Remember, we're trying to, we're not, we're timing a little bit here. So Mitch, Laura, and Betty, um, again, under two minutes, that's on timer. I'm gonna try and get people, to, uh, I'm running it. And then we're, I'm gonna, after Betty, I'm going to call the question. So Mitch, Laura, Betty. Okay, thank you. I mean, obviously I've always been supportive of, of these type of things. And I think uh, to comment on what Richard said, in no way do I feel there's anything that remotely resembles an Equinox gym or something like this. It's it's like a full size gym for schools that don't have their own gyms for the teams to practice and everything like that. Uh, I would agree uh, mostly with, like, with with Susan and I th and and uh, somebody else had mentioned uh, asking for a hundred thousand or at least not say in excess of whatever number you want to put and or just putting maximum, like so we're using the word maximum space for a full size field house, full size gym, uh, using that type of language so that when there is the secondary negotiations, like Bob said, then at least we have an advantage in, in where we're starting from. So that, that was my only comment. Thank you very much, uh, Mitch, going to Laura and then Betty. I, I see hands coming up, but all right. Keep going. Am I next? You are next. Two minutes, my friend. Okay, wonderful. So we're also going to be discussing this um, when I give the land use report on Fiber World Trade Center. And we did spend a long time in our committee talking about the allocation of the various types of spatial uses in that building, because obviously there's a lot of square feet in that building and that um the state had presented to us 12,000 square feet of community space. And we knew that there's a huge need for, for gyms and recreation space for kids, as well as seniors, as well as a bunch of other things, which I will get to when I give the report. Um, but I just wanted to say that, that I think we should support this full force because this is a completely new building um, and the, the allocation of the space in it is still flexible is my understanding. So let's ask for what we need to create something that truly supports healthy living in lower Manhattan for everybody. Thank you, Laura, Betty. Thanks. I think this is really a double-edged sword. I understand why people want to get in early and make their case, but I also go with the concern that the community board coming out and setting a precedent by saying we want a gym for children by virtue of that excludes the other uses. And I'm not so sure that the best resolution going forward first should be that we have only one desire. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Justine, you're next. Thank you. Um, I guess what I want to call to is what Laura said, because in our resolution for land use, we note that they only said 12,000 square feet and we asked for uses of community facility space 
that should prioritize those that are desperately lacking, such as full gymnasium space that can be used by both children, seniors, and or senior facilities and amenities. So I think we talk about it here and perhaps maybe a friendly amendment, um, you guys, Bob and, and Tricia, just saying we, we want a full size gym that can be used by the schools, but also has other uses. And it should be a community gym, not uh, an equinox. So that kind of goes to what Richard was saying as well. And that's my friendly amendment it is to it addresses what Betty is saying. It, it can't just be for children, but it can be for children during the days and and uh, other uses at, in the evening, perhaps. But again, we don't have to go into that detail, but my request would be to friendly amendment to make it a little bit broader or not, because I think we do it in land use. Thank Trisha. you. So, Trisha, you need to, you know, you've heard everybody. We need to move forward with this conversation. So whether or not, and I think everybody has been heard at least once, um, and if you have anything new that has not been said, please leave your hand up. If it has been said, then I think we're at a point that, Tricia, are we changing the uh, therefore be it resolved at the bottom? Um. I mean, it says growing population. I Justine, I hear you, and it does insinuate it's for school use. Um, I am totally up to adding language that you know brings it into focus as not only for schools but for you know the community because this this is what differentiated this resolution from the one I'm doing next month. Um, it actually is a nice setup, to be honest with you, because we'd like to SCA to do private public partnerships because they don't have the room to build important infrastructure anymore. So, when you look at it through that lens, um, you know, obviously, you know, the, the gym isn't 24 seven for a school. And I do think much like our gyms. Now we have, we have other people outside people renting that space from them and. You know, I'm happy to, you know, add some language that makes it more, you know, less specifically about schools and more about a community amenity. I don't think that would be a problem. So it's therefore it would say to accommodate the growing population and the constituency of all age ranges, something of that like. I think, you know, I think that could be okay. I just always get worried about giving. <laughs> About giving them to whom I, I would prefer to just have them agree to this and then work with land use to, you know, flesh it out. I'm, I'm always afraid of giving them the hand to flesh things out for us. And that's why at this stage, I've learned to keep things sort of general. But, okay. you know, I, if I could, if we could put language that isn't. Does it open up a Pandora's yes. box? I think we could we could do that for sure. So Justine made a motion for a friendly amendment. We either need to we need to make a, a decision on that and move on. So Justine, you had wording that said you wanted to serve all ages. All ages. Uh, I mean, it, it's therefore ask the five contain a community facility use that word community facility that would include a gym field house whatever you want to throw in there fine a gym to include to accommodate the growing population of all ages that might be a balance because then it's it's this is saying from youth and ed which is focused on children and focus on one focus but then you've got the community facility and land use giving us more and i know we tend to do things like we pick at our points but is that language okay Tricia, um, does that represent? It doesn't represent. I think what the committee was going for. The committee was focused solely on. Feel as though as a youth committee, it, it's. A, I think it's okay to have this point of view. I I would be more inclined just to go with more generalized language instead of pointing out a different demographic in a youth resolution. You okay. know what I mean? I just. Yeah. I, I think there's okay. a way of achieving what Justine wants, maybe with a little bit of a different language if she trusts me to do it after the meeting and send it to her. Uh, no, it has to be done. No, here. it has to be part of the record. So, um, okay. can, all right, I'm going to move to Andrew Mariama, and then I'm going to ask Lucian to suggest some wording after. I have a question. You have to wait, Joe. 
We got to, gotta, everybody's got a hand up here. Let's okay. wait. We'll get to you afterwards. Mariama? Yeah, um, I hope that some language can be um, adopted and accepted uh, by Trisha and the Youth Committee. I've, I've probably been a PTA president or vice president at every school in this neighborhood with the exception mm -hmm. of the new ones. And I'm never against the children, but I feel that I would have to vote no on this resolution if it does not accommodate the entire community or if it seems like it's it, um, not inclusive of the entire community. Uh, and it has nothing to do with affordability because the building is, they've already allotted or, or promised us community space, whether the apartments are affordable or their market rate. So it has nothing to do with that. But limiting the space to one group, I think, is, is wrong. Thank you. Joe Lerner, you're next. You have not spoken yet. Joe and then Alice. Hey, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, this should be for everybody, and it should not exclude anybody. When we get the uh, property or if, when they give us permission to negotiate, then we can negotiate then. But I just think it should be everyone. Otherwise, I have to vote no. Thank you, Joe. Alice, you're next. I was just trying to search for wording that would encompass it all. I don't know that I got there actually, but I was thinking uh, a field house or gym or maybe a recreational facility for all age groups. Um, I don't know, something that's more generic. Field house and gym, it was about field house and gym sports during the youth and ed, if you. Kind of yeah, I understand that, but I'm just saying, okay, so, okay, so maybe it could take a field house and gym if it has to stay those um, uh, for for free recreation for all age groups to accommodate the growing population. So how about this? I don't know. My fear is that they're going to take charge and make something different. So if we can say regulation gym to accommodate the growing population of all ages. How does everybody feel about that? That's a good one. Okay, um, Andrew Zelter is the only one who has not spoken from the hands who are up. Again, for everybody who has spoken, this is not about arguing back and forth. If your point has already been raised or if you've already done your rebuttal, um, we're going to people who have not spoken before we come back to you. Mr. Zelter. So I was just, I guess, also going to propose language. I don't know that it's any better or worse, but maybe something along the lines of a recreational facility to support uh, youth activities and broader community use. No good. <laughs> Jeff Galloway. You're next, Andrew. I appreciate that. I'm waiting to hear back from Trisha. Jeff, you're the last one who has not spoken yet. Okay. I, I think I, I kind of agree with Trisha's latest uh, language. I, I think it is important to specifically state Jim. That's a particular kind of space that we are particularly lacking in. And, and uh, uh, Trisha's last language uh, did not limit it to children. I thought it was good. That's just my yes. thought. So, Tricia, yes. if we are going with that last language, it would say Manhattan Community Board 1 asked that Five World Train Center contain a field house slash gym to accommodate all ages and our growing population. Is that correct? I think what was said was the growing population of all ages. I think that was Justine's language, which I think was great. Okay. Um, and just before the word gym, I would put regulation because that way we protect it from just turning in to like the SCA thinks a gym. Yeah. So it's not a yoga studio. I get you. It, you know what I mean? Yep. The next person who has not said one word yet, Vicki Cameron on this topic. Just wanted to add that according to zoning regulations, community facility has very specific language. And if medical facilities include a, in, in this language, so are gymnasiums. But please be careful when you say that, it is immediately understood. Oh, they want a gym, we'll give them an equinox. That's how it is interpreted under community facility 
And so let's be careful that we don't get one of these if that's not what we want. I'm just saying what the zoning says. Thank you, Vicki. I think that's Tammy, I just as the drafter of the resolution would like to speak one more time. Uh, okay, so I, I before you do that, you'll yeah, sure. All right, Vicki, if you're done, Jeff, Andrew, Joe, Mitch, and Richard, put your hands down before we go back through a second run. So I, I put my hand down and then I put it back up to add something since this discussion was continuing in a certain way. So I'll wait for yeah. my turn. Okay, so Mitch and, and I've been waiting my turn as well. Okay. So we're gonna go Richard, Mitch, and Bob, and then we're done. Richard, you're first. Mitch, you're yes. second. And, 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 and I'm going again because the question that I asked really wasn't answered. Are we saying here, has the community board actually considered that our simple ask for the community space that is being offered is going to be a gym? And we don't want anything else because that is what this resolution is saying. I don't know if the community board is actually, if we've actually thought through the other options and whether this is number one. If this comes out to be number one over all of the other things, that's fine. But I think we're just right now, my feeling is that this is a good thing. It's important to do. Is it more important than everything else that could be a community space? I don't really know. And I don't think we've addressed it. And I, and I feel this just first out of the gate and that's why we're doing it. And that would be the only ask we're, we're presenting to, um, uh, to the developers and to ESD. And I, I, I find myself unable to vote for this, though I would love to have Jim for the, for the kids and for everybody else. Richard, thank you. Mitch, you're next. Right. I, I agree 100% with Trish, as I said before. And besides the word regulation, I would specify full size regulation because there are different size regulations for different like uh, for elementary school, high school, you know, and, and, and middle school. So I would put full size regulation and in no way uh, num number two, this resolution is coming from the youth committee. So it's coming from their point of view. It's not coming from the general like, you know, like everybody committee. So from the youth committee, that's where their focus is. Uh, so I would just add full size regulation, and I agree with uh, the Trisha uh, Justine combination wording. Thank you very much, Mitch. Thank you for being your concise on the second round, Bob. Thanks. You have the last call, and thanks, Tammy. Appreciate your, your tolerance, uh, folks. We need everybody to vote for this resolution, Richard. This is not going to be just a kids facility. I sit on the youth committee and I drafted it, but it will be negotiated, put through the laundry and shaken out. It's not gonna impact the senior or affordable housing. It's gonna all be spoken about. We, it, if Tricia, we should not make this just um, youth because that's where Trisha and I sit, and that's where the need is. But it could easily be Power Olympics. I'm thinking it's the World Trade Center, a giant field, which was proposed at the Battery Park City facility, would be for everybody. And we would make it for everybody. And that is why we need everybody to vote for this resolution to pass an affordable housing resolution, a senior resolution also, and throw it all at them. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna call the question. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Third. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, do we feel that we need to roll call this or can we just do an affirmation vote? Tricia? Uh, do we want to go over the language in the last sentence, Tammy? No. Uh, the language was as you stated it from the last sentence. Well, I'm, I'd like to add um, the uh, full size regulation, Jim. I think that was a Mitch had a really good comment. Thank you. We're dealing with so, the middle middle school and elementary size regulation, quote unquote, problem we have with the SCA. So I, I no, think we'd like to now, just succinctly. Therefore, be it resolved. Please read it succinctly. Manhattan Community Board 1 asked that 5 World Trade Center contain a field house 
and full size regulation gym to accommodate the growing population of all ages. Good. Second that. You here, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Mimi, take it away. Sure. Any abstentions? Meltzer abstains. He abstains. Okay. Anyone else? Blank abstains. Blank. Forsberg abstains. Moore abstains. Moore. Anyone else? Meltzer. Yeah, I got you. I got you first. Sorry. Meltzer, K, blank, Forsberg, Moore, abstain. Any opposed? Uh, Frank Kerr. Sorry. Oh. Frank Kerr, you're here? Yeah, and I missed the attendance. I apologize in the, in the last two votes. So uh, sorry about that. Um, okay. So you are here now. Excellent. Who is I the am. other? <laughs> Good to hear you. Any other opposed? Did you get Schneck abstain? I did not get Schneck abstain. Okay. All right. Uh, it, uh, there was another opposed though. I think I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not with, with, due, with due respect, with due respect to Bob and the need, we will be at the negotiating table to vote no. Ms. Corman votes no. Corman no. All right, so this uh, Corman Franker oppose. Any recusals? Um, Mullen recuse. Oh, right. Yes, that makes sense. Anyone else? All right, that's uh, that's it. That's a wrap. Thank you, Trisha. Next Thank rest. You, Thank you, everyone. Um, COVID uh, at home test kits results. So this uh, resolution is more about the return to school after exposure. Um, it's, you know, adults can return at five days. For some reason, the schools are still requiring students to isolate for 10 days. And so this Crazy. resolution is about aligning everybody with five days. Okay, I have hands up already. So I'm gonna go Michelle and then Colin. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, so as a DOE employee, I'm going to have to recuse myself, but just I think it's in the second whereas um, just to change the wording from at Spruce Street School to guidance from the Department of Education, just um, just because that is the DOE's policy. And I just sent the link to so you can see that it's not just school specific. It is the entire DOE putting that out. Perfect. Thank is that you. being followed at all of our schools the same yeah. way, Tammy? Because I thought that was part of the problem when you brought it. No, it's the same way everywhere. Teachers and oh. principals and staff go back at five days. Students have to remain out for 10. Okay. Well, then that makes total sense to change it to DOE. Okay. Michelle, thank you so much. Colin? I was going to make a motion to limit debate, but I don't think it's actually necessary. So I'll take it back. Where were you last? <laughs> I, I was trying to, but I gave up. Sorry. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, and I'll take that limit. I see no other hands up. Well, the question. Second, Mimi, take it away. All right. Any abstentions? Any opposed? Uh, Recusals. Mullen recuse. Got it. All right, so everybody else is fine. That's it. We're good. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. One more thing, and then we're done. Is um, we met with the DOT, as I think we did mention. We are waiting our second meeting with them to discuss to further discuss um, the Ed Edgar Street situation with the widened plaza on the south side of our new school that will open in uh, September, the Trinity Place School. Um, we are going to have another meeting. We are going to be inviting quality of life to that meeting. We are going to be reaching out to stakeholders on Cedar Street, on Greenwich Street, and we hope to have further clarification as to the DOT's plans for Greenwich Street so that we can 
advocate with for you know what we need here with with more information. Uh, but right now, all that's been decided is that there is going to be an extension of the southern sidewalk to accommodate a receiving plaza for the Trinity Place School. What happens to Edgar Street in terms of if there's one way traffic, two way traffic is still something that is being discussed, but, um, but we have received a commitment to creating that wider plaza, um, which is great news. And now we just have to flesh out how it's going to go. Thank you very much, Tricia. Thank you, uh, January 2022 for your report and for everything. And we move on to the next committee then. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, are we doing land use or are we supposed to be doing quality of life before land use? You want me to move to quality, Tammy? Yeah, I think, I think quality of life was supposed to come before land use because they did the resolution. Sorry, Patrick, they did the resolutions on affordability, which then feeds into you're supposed to be the last one because you're a five world trade after everybody else. Okay, so in quality of life, one of the, our big discussion was about the demolition of the jail and everyone knows we've had tons of people come and talk against the, the, the jail being demolished and we had the resolution. So all I can say is that, you know, we heard what their proposed plan is to demolish the jail, but we are hoping that they will, you know, that, that this project will be reconsidered. If you want to see the full discussion with uh, the Gramercy Construction Group, uh, who was uh, won the bid to do the demolition, and the DDC, then go to our YouTube channel and see the discussion. And I'll leave it at that. We also had, uh, as we do every other month, we had uh, Sergeant um, Nelson come in from the first precinct. And I encourage everyone to come if they have any issues that they would like to discuss with the police. I'd also encourage you to go to the uh, community uh, council meeting, which is uh, Thursday night, Thursday night, six to seven, first precinct community council meeting. Uh, that's it for me. And then I'm going to let uh, Mariama and Jill and Justine, who wrote the, the uh, rezo, to speak. All right. So. Again, as we roll, uh, Jill Goodkind is in the public session. She is going to be unmuted to be able to participate. Mariama is chairing this part of it. Um, so she'll call speakers back and forth. Everybody will be timed just as they were before. Um, and everyone gets recognized once. I will recognize everyone. Mariama will answer. Jill will support. You good with that? Sounds good to me. Awesome. Take it away for the resolution, please, from Ms. Mariama. Okay, so we have a resolution here for the affordable housing component um, at Five World Trade Center. We're really doing this, you know, in the interest of equity and desegregation, um, our part in ending the housing crisis and honoring the sacrifices of 9-11 families. If you've read the resolution, I hope that that's what you found it contained. Um, and I, I'd hope that we'd be able to vote on this quickly, but of course, any questions or conversation? Let's have it. All right, fantastic. There was a lot of hard work that's gone into a lot of this, so make sure that if you have questions, you've read it. Oh my gosh, I don't see one hand up, Mariana. Oh, no, 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 they're coming Woo! in, sorry. I found the question, somebody seconded it. Sorry, 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 no, there are questions, there are hands up. So first we're gonna go um, Gerald, Colin, Susan. Uh, I actually would like to make a motion to amend. Uh, can I go last or should I do that now? No, you need to go first. Go first. Ah, very good. All right. So, um, on the that last, therefore, be it resolved, um, I wanted to make a uh, motion to amend that this reads the current LMDC plan for five world trade center, which does not guarantee, um, so sorry. Um, you mean the be it further resolved? Oh, oh, the, I'm sorry, the one above it. Okay, go the ahead. One above it. Thank you. I, uh, I I scrolled down and started reading the wrong one. There we go. Um, yeah, the whereas um, as as New York City is moving towards meeting the goals of Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, um, five World Trade Center must be built 
using state of the arts. And what I'd like to make a motion to amend is to say state of the arts net positive plus 33 and sustainable urban development standards producing enough energy to maintain itself plus 33% more energy to be shared or sold uh, with the immediate community, thereby mitigating the costs of long-term maintenance of the structure, committing to global and local initiatives, uh, climate, sorry, global and local climate initiatives, and local social sustainability, equity, and diversity. Thank you. Jill, Justine, what do you think about that? I think it's fine with me, but it's Mariama's the chair, co-chair. So. It's a motion to amend. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, it's, well, it's, a, it's a friendly amendment, I thought. Yes. It's okay, a, so I'm, I'm deciding whether or not it's acceptable. Jill? Wait, um, one. Hold on. Lucian, can you speak up? You're right. So this is probably a little bit farther than just clarifying. So I think to be safe, you should just do complete the motion to amend and see if there's anyone opposed to it. You don't have to roll call it, but I think that if when you when you go further than clarifying, it should be a motion to amend. But okay, but I don't think it's really changing it all that much. It's it's he's putting in whatever. I I, I don't think it's a change. So you're saying we should address it as a motion, not a friendly amendment. Correct. So the motion has to be second then. Go, somebody going to do that? Second. Okay. Okay. I think it should just be a simple, did anyone opposed kind of thing. Could he read it again? Yeah, could he read it again? Maybe put it in the in the chat so we have the wording exactly. Yeah, and, and just a quick question um, for Gerald. Can you just succinctly explain why you want to make that change? I, I just, uh, the main reason is because I felt as though simply stating net positive 33, um, you know, that, that, that addresses the, um, maintenance or rather the, um, the, the climate side of things and, and the long-term maintenance issues that, that the, um, that, that's been brought up. Um, but it, it, to me, it didn't feel like it addressed sustainable, um sustainable urban development as a whole meaning meaning beyond just what the building can do uh to maintain itself but but also what it can do for for um equity and diversity and 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 um you know the the immediate community thank you thank you jill okay so emotion i think, we should, I think we should, I... it should say it well, should well, say um Mariama. Should, though, rather than must. That would be my only comment on that. So, Mariama, a motion was made. It was seconded. It has to be voted to okay, go so let's, forward. Let's take with, the vote. With how it, it, it was said. Correct. If it fails, then we can do the, we can change the word. Isn't there debate on the motion? I thought we could discuss the motion. Yeah. I, I d personally don't like the word. Um, must There's because much. we we've been very careful to avoid like restrictive language that would pre that would have prevent. Um, oh, it says from being able, able to do it. Must build. Should build. Should be built. Should. Must be built. Yes, yeah, should. I, I agree with Miriam. Yeah, I would agree with that. That's stop. friendly to me. Stop, stop, guys. The way it rolls is Miriam says it. If it was first and second in, you have to do a vote. The crosstalk is not going to help us get moving forward you must raise your hand to be recognized it's like arguing in the room it's not actually helping us move forward okay let's call the question or, or, the, or the motion so the motion as lucian said just needs to have no's yeses we don't have to roll call that mimi anybody oppose well can i can i ask you a question uh, tammy because i'm not sure how to vote i just on procedure if I, I would, okay, because I would prefer the word should, then I have to vote no so it fails and then we, to re, to re have it done as should? Correct, because it's a different wording. Okay. One, okay. Is, one is compulsory, the other one is not. Okay, okay, thank you. So I'll, I, I know what to do now when my name is called. May I amend my emotion? Please. <laughs> okay. 
Let's move it along. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, my motion would be to uh, let's see here. Um, as New York City is moving to, to that, this whereas would read as New York City is moving towards meeting the goals of the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, five World Trade Center should be built using state of the art net positive plus 33 and sustainable urban development standards producing enough energy to maintain itself plus 33 percent of more energy to be shared sold with the immediate community thereby mitigating the cost of long-term maintenance of the structure committing to global and local climate initiatives and uh, as well as local social sustainability equity and diversity Okay. Can we vote on that now? Yes. Okay. Let, let's. So, uh, Mimi, I'm going to help you out here. Are there any? We're going to assume an affirmation vote. Are there any no's? Are there any recusals? Are there any abstentions? Hearing none, that motion carries. I have hands up for that friendly amendments in now from Susan, Andrew, and Vicky in that order. It is about the resolution with the motion that has now been voted in. Oh, before you go ahead, my hands raise. Uh, I don't. Oh, I'm sorry, Jill. You're down in the in the public yeah, sector. I didn't down, see. down in the dumps. Anyway, um, just because I'm not sure if this is something that needs to be mentioned before we go ahead, there is one where as that is in there that I'm not. 100% clear on. So I just wanted to raise it. It's not. Um, the LMDC has failed to create affordable housing in lower Manhattan as is its stated mission. So for background, when I went on the LMDC site, I can no longer find anything on affordable housing. That may have just been me. I don't know. So I could not do a double fact check on that. So I my suggestion is to remove it then. Yep. That's what she's moving to do. Yeah, but I'm a public member, so I'm not sure that I can do that. Okay, I'm moving to remove it based on what she said. I'm looking to find it. Which okay. Just it is, I, I'm part of the committee doing it. Right. So she made a motion. I said I suggest to remove it. Second. I, I second it. So we're good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, hands that are up. Let's go in order. Susan, Vicki, Colin. I just wanted to add um, where it talks about the population, uh, who it could be for um, the uh, firemen, uh, victims of 9-11, et cetera. I do think we should put in a uh, community, um, uh, uh, members of the community. I happen to think they should get priority, despite what everybody is telling you, it was my business for 36 years, we could fight for community preference. That's my only comment. I'm not opposed to putting it in, but yes, you're right. We have been told that those kinds of preferences are no longer, you know, at the minimal. Um, I think what they said, Mariama, not to, they said they couldn't guarantee it because there's a lawsuit. The lawsuit. Right. That's well, what they said. So it's not, right. it's not That's that it's. Okay, Let's put it in. So they're certainly giving community preference today and other affordable housing that's available. They have, exactly. but now there's a lawsuit and everybody's quivering, Jeff, but it, uh, uh, this may yeah. not, you know, okay, that's it. Yeah, I that's think there's something I active in board, in board three, actually, on that. Susan, yeah. I, I accept it. Awesome, thank you. So that is in. Moving on to Vicki, Colin, Mitch, in that order. And somebody... Can you do me a favor, Lucian? Can you just move Jill Goodkind back over? She fell off. Just move her back in. Thank you. I would like to make two comments um, based on the experience of uh, being an architect and listening to the other side, to you know, being on the other side. Um, please feel to express any desire you want, uh, and don't worry about the language because. In, in our position here, we're the client. That's how we're viewed. So whatever you want, 
Don't worry about possible, maybe required, not required. Please consider yourself as the client and then think, what does the client say? I want this and it's okay to say it. Yes. And the second thing I want you to all understand something that has come up over and over. Uh, we do a lot of lead design buildings, right? And we spend years designing and building high rise buildings and they are lead certified and one of the things that we're finding out over and over is that six months later, the engineers or the architects will go and we will find that the building is running at full capacity. And why is that happening? Is because owners hire what we call quote unquote building engineers who never even walk by an engineering school. They do not understand how these buildings should run and so we're finding out that in spite of all the back work uh the buildings are not fulfilling these requirements and i just wanted you all to know there's a reality out there and uh we should be cognizant of it so is there another whereas that we should add about that oh i i don't know darling this is like a community wide uh, comment, I don't know how we introduce this. It's something that's come up and it's really bugged me for a long time. And I just wanted to share with you. So if anywhere at any point in time, we can say that, you know, um, following a, a, a lead certification, you know, we expect that ownership uh, has staff that understands how to implement this. This this is a much bigger problem than tonight. So maybe that yeah, that sounds like it'll be something maybe still for quality of life, but later further down the line. Yeah, because That's also right. the lead no, standards. Justine, Justine, and I... you cannot tag in. This is part of the conversation. You cannot tag in. Vicky's made a thing. The chair of the committee has said something. If you want to tag in and say something new or different or supportive, it's at a later date. If Mariama says we will take this up at a later date, then we move it on because we have to stay focused on this resolution. So, Vicky, yeah. if you're done, if Mariama yeah, said that we we're taking you. it to a different thing, Colin, you're next. Uh, two quick things. Could Mariama and or Tammy please send me the amendments? I have lost track for the minutes. And two, I'd like to make a motion to end debate at 8.55 p.m. Thank you. How many more hands are up? None, so that motion is accepted. Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, right? All right. Yes. Ju Justine, did you have anything you'd like to say? Your hand is not up. Okay, so I think we are done. Would you please read back the amendments that were added. We have Gerald Forsbergs that was added. We have Mariama, the other two things. We are deleting the whereas that says the LMDC has failed to create Lower Manhattan. Well we're not gonna we're not gonna um delete that part that they failed to create affordable housing in Lower Manhattan because that's true. But we're gonna delete the portion that says as is its stated mission because they've updated or somebody has updated the website and it lo no longer um, is included on the website that one of the part of the mission was to create affordable housing. Okay. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you very much with nothing else on the floor. Oh, and Susan um, also oh. added, I'm sorry, that we're going to extend the preference to the larger community, to the district, I guess we'd say people living within community board one or right. some wording similar to that. Yes. Exactly. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Okay. And if we are good then, I see no other hands. Last call pursuant to Collins. Let's call the question. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Mimi, take it away. Any abstentions? I abstain. It's Laura. Laura Starr. Is Elter abstained? Elter. Hey, abstains. Kettering abstains. Okay. Kettering. Stars, Elter, okay, Kettering. Any other abstentions? Any oppose? Who opposes? I'm sorry. Say that one more time. You opposed. You, okay. Correct. 
I think that's correct. All right. Anyone else? Any recusals? All right. We're good. I just quickly wanted to add that as many of you know that my building is 100 feet away from what was the South Tower and it was destroyed on 9-11 without she Shelly Silver. I would not be part of this community board. I would not be back in my home. So all of my neighbors and I thank him for what he did for us and saved our home. Okay, on that note, thank you very much. Uh, oh, no, Pat, you still have to do an update on the dismantling, yes? No, you did that. No, I no, I, I think it. Yeah, go go and look at it on YouTube. I mean, there you know a lot of the community spoke tonight. You have the rezo that we want to, you know, Perfect. hopefully dismantling. So look at. That's awesome. Okay, thank you. Next committee, please. Land use. Patrick and Laura, thank you very much. I know you split this. Uh, you split the meeting, so I'm going to ask you to split the full board meeting. Thank you so much. Take it away. Yeah, uh, Laura, if you don't mind, I'll just jump in and go quickly. Uh, go first quickly because I think that. Go for it. Guys, okay. Um, so, but Laura's going to present to you all uh, on the five world trade center piece, which will build on everything that you just heard on. But if I can interrupt just for a moment, uh, we have a unanimous resolution out of our committee for your consideration in support of a zoning challenge. Uh, brought by the Seaport Coalition and Council Member Marte. Uh, we received a presentation from George Jaynes, uh, a zoning consultant who the community board, I think, knows. Uh, in effect, the zoning challenge, and I won't get into all the um, minutia of it and details of it. You can see that in the resolution. This is basically a post ULERP challenge, legal challenge that's lodged with the Department of Buildings, um, and it's filed within 45 days after DOB. Uh, posts an approved zoning diagram. Um, there's a little confusion in this particular project because of a change over the technology at DOB as to when that occurred. It hasn't happened yet, as it turns out, but the um, council member and Seaport Coalition filed their challenge initially anyway. They'll refile it in time, uh, presumably when, um, when, when the actual zoning diagram is approved. Uh, the applicants land use council uh, provided us a letter, which is summarized as well in our resolution in response to the zoning challenge, but it's another uh, step in those um, folks challenge to the 250 water street project. So take any questions that you have, but otherwise ask that we move on that resolution pretty quickly. I can't wow. see hands. So anybody I can I don't see any hands. Great, I will take that as a compliment. Uh, call the question then. Second, Mimi, take it away. Sure thing. Uh, any abstentions? Any? Kettering, oppo Kettering opposes. Sorry, I jumped. Kettering opposes. Any uh, any abstentions or op oppositions? Uh, Frank Kerr any... also opposes. Okay. Anyone else? I'm a recusal. It's Laura. Okay. Anyone else? The I'm an abstain. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Got it. Got it, Betty. All right. So I have Betty abstain. Kettering and Franker oppose and stars recuse. I'm sorry, oh. Zelter abstain. Oh, Zelter abstain also. Okay. Okay, thanks everybody. I'll turn it over to Laura who led our five world trade center discussion in my absence. Thanks, Laura. Yes. Okay, which which was a um fabulous discussion actually that I hope in some way can continue given everything we've been talking about this evening. So we were presented with um the modified general project plan for five world trade center which has to do with the conversion of the building from a purely commercial office tower to a mixed use building that would include uh residential and what this modified plan included was actually a very interesting graph in it that had allocate two options for allocation of residential commercial fitness 
and social center, community facility, and retail. So we actually went through the various allocations of those things uh, in our discussion and decided that it was very important to have retail that was affordable retail to counterbalance all the luxury retail um, that's blossomed in lower Manhattan. Um, we focused on the community facility, both for the children and for seniors. Um, and they're just for out of interest, their chart actually had an option for 13,000 square feet and another option for 21,000 square feet and change. Then they also had an option for a fitness and social center with two options, 36,000 gross square feet and then 80,000 gross square feet. Um, commercial, between 180,000 gross square feet and 374 and change gross 100,000 gross square feet. Um, and we decided we don't want any more commercial in this building and we would like to reallocate that space to a community facility and, and things that will serve the community better. Um, and of course, the more we have of the categories I just mentioned would eat into the allocation for the residential uses. So, um, so the spirit of our resolution is that we want to, we want this building to serve the broader community because the other World Trade Center buildings are really dedicated to commercial uses. And so if you look at the where as clauses, um, we have full gymnasium space, um, gymnasiums for seniors, we want uh, re affordable retail space, um, um, some arch you know, architectural innovation, um, looking at the outdoor space, we want a really inviting building for people um, in wheelchairs, including medical facilities that are fully accessible, um, and on and on. So that, that is the intent of our resolution. Um, actually, Diana, the one thing I just caught rereading this is it says in here, the first uh, be it resolved, the community facility space of only 12,000 square feet is woefully insufficient. They actually did give the, uh, they did say 13,000 as the low end of that. So we may want to just correct that. But other than that, are there any um, questions about this resolution? So let's do hands up so we can keep it nice and orderly, folks. Uh, first hand up is going to be Colin. Second will be Andrew Zelter. I, Colin first. Yeah, this, this is a really great resolution. I support it uh, as a whole. I just wondered if I could make a friendly am amendment. And if you say no, that's cool too. I wonder if there could be a priority for small independently owned retail businesses uh, on this footprint. I think that'd be a pretty cool way to do kind of the same thing that you're trying to do with commercials or with the uh, retail space. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be wonderful. So right. is that a, is that a whereas Colin suggestion or therefore be it resolved that you would like to have a focus on small business in the retail? I'd leave that to Mara. She, it sounds like she wrote this wherever she thinks it fits. I just well, think, I, oh. I have to credit Diane. I, 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 <laughs> I will, think the whole thing. I have to admit it. But <laughs> no, no, no. I, I I will say that that what I did do was I tried to lead the kind of like programming discussion that as a landscape architect we would do for a park or something like that and and really have a more open dialogue that this building deserves and and hearing all the you know trish and everybody tonight makes me wish that we could just have our own meeting about this and really fully develop you know a comprehensive programming for this building so it's really doing what we wanted to do um, but anyway, I'm fine with you, um, you know, adding that. Tammy, I think the language would be a bullet point below. It would say that the developers or whatever the builders would prioritize um, small, independent New York City based businesses before larger national commercial interests or something like that. Or why don't we say, well, was, well, we're not, we're, we're the point is that we want to have affordable retail. So I think in addition that, that we're hoping that the retail will also include that as in addition to affordable retail, we're hoping it will, you know, include small local businesses. Yeah, so that, wherever you think it's best. I, I think we were saying the it, same thing. Well, let's do that because I, yeah, okay. 
um you want okay. inclusion you want inclusion not exclusion is what you're saying yes because mm -hmm. we are we are also saying in there it says i.e grocery stores grocery stores are not known as a small business but it is a, a huge thing for community support so if i understand colin what you're saying is inclusion and not exclusion it's more yeah. focused on independent businesses not large chains that's kind of where i'm coming well, okay i think the intent of what we were talking about was you know affordability for people living you know i would say like it well in the financial district so um so i would i for me it would have to be an include in addition to the affordable retail you know as opposed to in a, I'll defer to you uh, no fight here i'll defer to you okay andrew zelter then justine then vicky and uh, i'm gonna go to yeah Two, and I'm Mimi. I think you're timing two minutes a piece, right? I'll yeah. Do, yeah. Okay. Andrew, Justine, Vicky. So related question on the retail front. And apologies, I read it, but I can't recall if it's there, and I can't really see the screen. Do, do we provide any guidance or generally accepted definitions of what is affordable retail? Uh, not. We weren't so specific um right diana i mean we yeah that's something you have that's discussed a lot at committee um and and the committee discussed and debated um setting guidelines or or reference points in terms of specific stores or what that might be and then ultimately decided it would um we don't want to pen ourselves in or or reference specific brands or um the danger of getting uh, of penning ourselves in by being too specific in that regard. So it is left more general at this stage. But do you have a suggestion, Andrew? Were you thinking it's no, more specific? No, I, I don't. And I can imagine it's a very difficult thing to try and provide some guidance on. And given the fact that the committee discussed it, I'm comfortable with where it's left at. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Justine and then Vicki. So yeah, thank you, um, Andrew. Yeah, Diana answered the question. What What was the solution, or what was the answer to Colin's question? We're not making any change. No, we uh, we agreed that we would say, in addition to the affordable retail, we would like to include small, like locally owned small businesses. So the 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 the, the bullet point that says CB one believes that rather than commercial office space, greater retail space is needed, specifically retail that is affordable geared towards serving existing and growing residential pop population, i.e. grocery stores, and or including what, what you just said about, uh, or something like that. I'm trying to get the exact word. Say and, and including um, local small businesses. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. Good point. Like where it goes. Uh, Vicki, Betty, Gerald. I just want to add a general comment again on how our direction here gets translated through the industry. Please be specific for the client. That's how we should be seen and our projects get, you know, vetted through what does the client want. Don't 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 be worried about being specific, because how else are we going to know as architects? And the other thing I want to tell you is that, again, I hear this over and over again. When these large projects go out to real estate uh, agents, these large developers tend to go with large real estate agents. And I often hear what local shoe repair shop will call the largest real estate agency that was hired to handle the rentals, no one, because they think, oh gosh, I can't, I can't possibly qualify. So I just want you to know the background to this kind of thinking when we're, when we're, you know, making ideas, suggestions, hopes, and and dreams for our community. Okay. Do you have a friendly amendment, Vicky, that goes in line with what you're saying? That there should be some sort of. Um small business outreach or advocacy done by yeah so you can do that here but in general on anything we think about 
please think about this. Um, I don't have any other time to share this thought than in these general meetings, but absolutely if we can include it so that the real estate agents who are hired to manage uh, reach out to small local communities, make that a really strong statement. I'm not an expert in this. I'm only an expert on the other side. Well, why don't we then, may I suggest that we add another um, point that we would like a portion of the retail to be dedicated, you know, to be made affordable for local, yeah. for, you know, for local um, service, small business, small businesses, like service, small businesses, just like what you're talking about, the shoe repair place. Yes. Thank you. Otherwise, and actually, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to give an example of this because, you know, um, years ago we worked on the, the development on front street, um, and the developers specifically hired a real estate agent who, um, made sure that there were only mom and pop shops that went in there in the seaport in the old historic part of the seaport. And I thought that was really fantastic. Excellent. That's exactly what I mean. So I, think that's what we're, I think that that's what we're talking about here. And then we, yeah. we should really yeah. push yeah. for that. It. Otherwise, they hire groups that are so large that, right. you know, okay. if I have a little printing studio, I, I wouldn't okay. call the largest art real estate company in New York. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. So let's just find a way to add this in is it does That's fine we can definitely do that thank you vicky okay. for that suggestion yep. okay uh, let's keep on going andrew you've already spoken so if your hand is still up leave it up i'll come back to you if it you're done please take it down betty gerald mariama thank you and yeah this is an impressive resolution so congratulations but i'm still going to nitpick one small point and that is in the bullets that you talked about that starts with CB1 believes uh, that rather than commercial office space, at the end of that, you have IE grocery store. IE means a restatement, meaning in other words, your idea of retail space is grocery store. So versus EG, which would be grocery stores are an example of what you're talking about. Okay. You really mean to put in IE versus EG. Okay, let's fix that. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Where were you when I needed you in college? Just saying. Okay, Gerald. <laughs> um, I, I good. <laughs> I'm trying to find my uh, the language here, but um, Laura, you brought up a very good point about uh, programming, and as we all know, there's been several designs over the years floated out there for the structure already, which I find interesting, considering there's no no real program from the community yet. So, um, I was wondering if maybe. Um, I believe LMDC also has their um, their their um, open for statements until I, the fifth of February. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I was uh, what I would like to add is a friendly amendment that the LMDC host a series of uh, perhaps a series of community charrettes um, specific uh, specifically to develop comprehensive programming that is community specific um, and perhaps a subsequent design competition to meet um, the community programming and the quality of life requirements um, that, that, that CB1 is putting out there. And you can help me to word that as ever you want. I mean, you know, what I think is that, that the architects on the community board could facilitate a better charrette than the LMDC will be able to do. <laughs> I, I'm really, really serious because, you know, because some of us do this every day for a living and we're good at it. And that way we have control of the conversation and it's not just, do you want a pink bench or a purple bench in Wagner Park? It will be, do you want us to totally, you know, take away Wagner Park? So, you know, I think that's, I don't know, that's my opinion on this. I, I agree that this needs a more comprehensive workshopping of a conversation to get this building Right, and that it could be a model of a community centered building in a in an international business district. And I, and I think it's like a really rare opportunity to make something special here with, you know, integrated community. Thinking, but I'm not sure the best way to achieve it. So, so, so who, would, who would you suggest would be the, the, um, 
facilitator of of such a community focused uh, series of charrettes. Let let me be the chair and answer that question. Sorry, for Tammy. You. Thank you, <laughs> Laura. Take that suggestion. I hear where you're going, and you've already answered the question that they would work with community board one who will work with our local to host charrettes. There's no reason that we can't work with our local city council person to get okay. that done. Okay, and and what and I would, I mean, this, okay, so do we want to put that in the resolution then? I think we can somehow put that in the resolution that we would like to have a community charrette slash workshop um, to talk about the to to further vet the programming of the um, non residential spaces of the building. How's that? Perfect. The, because... allocation, the allocation of the non residential spaces yeah. of the building um, that, you know, we see it as a great opportunity to be, um, tr you know, uniquely tailored to or, or tailored to the unique lower Manhattan context. Correct, because that's what uh, that is part and parcel to the result of the failure of what's gone on at the Oculus, because they didn't bother to listen to or even really engage in what we were having in dialogue. So we'll just start at that time. May I just add and and as part of that charrette um, to open it up to global design. I mean, that, that we'll we'll get that we'll get there. That's so I think. Yeah, because Gerald, I think that there's two different things. One is what what is the programming of the spaces, and then the design is is a second thing. But I think you know we need to get the programming. I would focus on the programming first, and then you know maybe I I don't know the design is is a separate thing. You've got this it. This is a programming. This is land use. Right. Exactly. Fair enough. Yep. Okay. Okay. Mariama. And again, Gerald, my bad for not cutting you off as viciously as I've cut others because you don't speak as often. But two minutes, get all your stuff out. Not supposed to be a back and forth, right? So just be prepped. I hear where you're going. All right, uh, Richard Corman, and then I think Mariama got lost. I thought you just called me. Oh, I did. Good. You're unmuted. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. So you guys have touched on some of the things that I wanted to ask quickly. Um in a slightly different way. I threw up my hand when Colin was speaking um, to ask if maybe we wanna be a more, little bit more specific about small businesses. For example, I used to, uh, I was a controller at a small business because we had a hundred guys working in the shop only. That was a small business. Do you mean, do you mean small business or maybe mom and pop? Um, so that was my first question. And um, to that end, I read a downtown Alliance newsletter, I'm pretty sure it was, where they had some sort of program helping to facilitate people to, you know, these small business owners, mom and pop shops or storefronts to be able to afford rent in the area. So you, that may be something you want to look into. And um, also, I wasn't going to use the term charrette, but I was going to ask the chair if maybe that um, this conversation about what the community wants could be one of our hearings, you know, could fulfill the hearing requirement at the full board. Hands down. I'd be happy to take that suggestion. It's a great one. Thank you so much. All right, moving along. Who did I say was next after Mariana? Uh, I think that was me. Richard. Richard. Eric? Yeah. After Richard. So it goes Richard, Eric. Thank you. Sorry. I'm start it's 917. I'm starting to lose composure. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Uh I, I totally support what we're doing here. I think this is, uh, I supported it in committee and I certainly do here now. I think uh, uh, Laura has phrased it right. I just want to remind people that what we are talking about here is uh, an approval for mixed use uh, of the building. They are obligated to come back to us uh, later in the schedule for the building itself. So we will have time down the road, it's not a February 15th deadline for what the programming or the building is gonna look like, but I certainly agree that it's important to get our desires in here uh, at this point in time. I'd only just add, this would have been the perfect place to put the youth in ed 
a request for a gym, we could have put it all in, in one resolution. It may, may, would make more sense to me having done that, but uh, that's already done. Wait, it is in Thanks. here, Richard. Richard, it is in here, the second bullet point, be it resolved that uses for community facility space should prioritize those that are desperately lacking among our communities, such as full gymnasium space that can be used by both children and seniors and or senior facilities and amenities. Does that, that yeah, doesn't... But, the, but, the, but the youth in ed seems to take priority. It says really what we want is a uh, regulation gym. So we can, That's, we do you want to make a, uh, we can amend this. Richard, I don't think they're incompatible. Okay, I, they seem to to me, but. I don't think they are. Well, you know, the thing is, if we, hold on, let me get this chart out. You know, if, if we, convert can convert some of that commercial space. I mean, look, there's enough non residential space allocated for acres of athletic facilities in this building. If we can get it dedicated to that. Right? So we just, we need, we need a um, mechanism for doing that. And Tammy, I don't know. Is it 1 of their meetings? Is it a charrette? Is it talking to them? But there's a, the point is there's enough space. It's just a question of getting them to agree to allocate it. I think we're good. I think his point's been made. Let's move on. I'm going to make a, a motion to limit to debate. It's 921 till okay. 930 for a call of vote. Until okay. 930, did you say? There are four, three hands up at uh, two minutes just, east. Okay. That gives me six minutes, Alice. Thank you for interrupting. Sorry, I got you too. And then that gives us a chance to call for the vote. Oh, now I'm dropping hands. That works. Eric? Oh, uh, yeah, Eric hi. And Jeff. Okay, hi. Um, I, I agree with having uh, the set community space, uh, dedicated space, but I, I don't agree with the statement where, where commercial, you know, where retail space is needed over commercial office space. With, I, I think the market should decide. Um, also, we have a lot of vacant retail space in this area and having the commercial office space brings the workers, the people into this community who will, you know, who will shop here. So I, I'd rather have more people who are employed in this, you know, in the financial district, you know, in, the, in, in CD1 than, than just retail space. I mean, I'm just saying there's already a lot of retail space in this area that's, that's um, vacant. Thank you. Okay, it's also a lot of commercial space that's vacant. Anyway, let's keep going. Yep. All right, Eric is done. Jeff and then Joe. It's, it's just a point of information. I may be misunderstanding the design uh, mixed use design guidelines, but on page nine of that document, they have a table that allocates between um, yes thirty six thousand to eighty thousand square feet to a fitness and social center, and the community facility, by the way. It's 13,000 at a minimum, not 12. I don't know where the 12 comes. Right, from. we already said that. We, I already noted that. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Joe Lerner. I think Richard was right that we should eliminate the word uh, children. So it's more general because if you put that in, the powers that be will do what they want, which favors what they want to do. If you make it more general, we got it. It's better in my mind. Okay. Well, this is general. This this resolution is general. Thank Not with the word children first. Well, Joe point noted um, on what you've said. It it's in there though because it it was including, not limited to. Because children and seniors. Okay, let's keep going. That's it. Joe was the last hand up. So uh, nine twenty four. Let's call the question. Second. Okay. Okay. Um, any abstentions? Any oppose? Any recusals? It's looking like we're we're all good here. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your patience and great ideas. All right, awesome. Licensing, Susan Cole, you are up. Remember, we have uh, two committees after Susan's. So if somebody has said what you have to say, do not repeat it. 
And Susan, for our lovely secretary and co-secretary, if you are going to bundle any of these, can you please let them know in advance? I'm going to bundle immediately two uh, uh, or three. Three thirty-three Bessie. Uh, let me put what else. One Broadway. And ninety-four Greenwich. If nobody has any questions, I'd like to take those all as one. Call the question. Thank you, Carl. Second. You are welcome. Mimi, take it away. All righty. Any um, abstentions? Oppose? Recuse? All righty. We're good here. We have one, we have two uh, uh, complicated uh, licensing today. Uh, the first we can get through, I think, uh, uh, is 279 Church Street. And um, uh, we, if you read the resolution, I think we a answered a lot of the gentleman's uh, question when um, he spoke at the public meeting. And uh, we tried to get everything in. And um, in terms of um, uh, what they were doing in that space. And uh, unless anybody had a question or a concern, um, uh, we changed the hours, we did a number of things, and we were, we were unanimous as a committee. So um, uh, I would ask everybody to vote for this. I guess I second it. Call the question. I'm sorry. What are we? Which one? I'm sorry. I've lost track. What are we? Are Susan you just track? We're very fast, Alice. I know. She's you know. I just I know what's up on the screen has nothing to do with what you're talking about. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Yes, we're uh, at two seventy nine Church Street. That's our resolution. Which not, not two ninety three Church. Is that no, right? not yet? Seventy nine. Okay, got it. Thank. It's on the screen now, Alice. Now it is great. Okay, so there was question was called and seconded. All right. Uh, any abstentions? Forsberg abstains. Forsberg. Any oppose? Any recusals? All right. Thank you. So now. 293 is a very complicated proposal. It's very long, the resolution. We spent a lot of time on this. Um, most of you know my philosophy, and it's even more so after having gone to the SLA for our um, uh, uh, exchange place um, and blank, immersion submersion, subversive, whatever you want to call it, immersive. And they uh, uh, put in additional stipulations and we had voted it down here at committee and at uh, um, the board. So there were a number of issues raised by the public this time around. Um, they did go for a beer and uh, uh, wine. They have changed some ownership. It's now Zach, the original owner who had some violations, a co-owner is no longer. This is a very complicated uh, uh, resolution. And if you read the last whereas is, we put in some stuff around what Mitch had raised in terms of the sound system. They haven't put it in. I want you all to know that my understanding it is it has not been put in. So I have asked and we have asked that um, the further be it resolved, the last further be it resolved that the, and I would welcome any tighter language uh, uh, to ensure that the soundproofing and acoustic plans are done by a certified professional and submitted with the application to the SLA before final approval of a, of the beer and wine license. Um, 
we've gone through the hours, we've changed them, we've done a number of things. Um, and um, it's here. So I'm willing to answer any questions. This was not an easy one, but I felt that, and I think most of the committee felt that uh, um, we were gonna give, give it a shot and we were gonna let with all our stipulations. I will tell you all, I just want to say out loud that I had the best person to work with ever as Jen Maldonado. She was extraordinary. She was competent. As Tammy said, she grew and learned a lot by being with the staff and the board members. And I'm going to miss her terribly. So there. Anyway, does anybody have any questions? Andrew, is your hand up for me or is it not? It's you. So you got Andrew and then Colin. Okay. I don't know if Joe's hand is up for this or not. I'll I wait. was up first and you know why I, mine was up to me. Okay, so we're gonna go Colin first. I apologize, you are correct, Mr. Mahoney. Okay, Colin, motion to limit debate to 936. Uh, I can't do Five that minutes. because you have too many hands up. So <sighs> yeah, one we'll minute. We'll try to get through this, Colin, me too. Colin, I know, I down. And I, just, I, just, I just want to say really quickly, the reason why I'm doing this, guys, is because we all, some of us have kids and things to do, and we can't keep going to 10 o'clock. That's all. Agreed. So no more people, literally two minutes. I have a timer running. You can be one. That is the goal. Andrew, you are first, and we only are limiting it to 10 minutes. So Andrew, go. Susan, thanks for this quick question. Has the owner been presented with our stipulations and do we have any response from the owner regarding those? He will have to sign this, all the stipulations. I believe he did. Uh, uh, I, uh, I don't know whether Lucian knows, but Jen and I had given him these. He agreed to everything, but the, he agreed to the soundproofing. And in all fairness, what we all saw and what Mitch, who has experience and what we looked at was not adequate. That's why I, we put the piece in our uh, um, uh, resolution. It's uh, Andrew, uh, this, uh, Andrew, uh, uh, it, it, this is so complicated, but we tried to, 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 to do the best we could. But yes, he has done some south soundproofing in the center, but the skylight, all of that was not done. And it was not done adequately. Thank you, Susan. Yes. Andrew, you done? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you. Reese. Okay, that puts me to Mark Amoruso. Mark, timer's running. Uh, I'm just going to say, I understand the uh, the thinking, uh, you know, with regards to going to the SLA and uh, having a, a approval with stipulations as opposed to a disapproval. But um, it just in this case, in good conscience, I couldn't I couldn't vote for it. But I, but I understand the thinking and the strategy. So um, we had an old saying in the. Uh, in the old Tribeca committee, who, who, when um, we presented with um, uh, before the liquor light, before the SLA kind of reformed itself, uh, that um, you know if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, it's a duck. So kind of got to go with the gut. So that's all I have to say. Thanks, Mark. It's Thanks, Mark. and I do appreciate it. I mean, let's okay. For Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm troubled by the nature of the complaints from the public speakers, as as well as the ones recited in the uh, resolution. And uh, you know, I have no personal knowledge of any of this, and so I don't want to cast aspersions on the on on the owner. Um, but if we take at face value the complaints, um, it doesn't sound like things that they may agree to can be relied on to comply with. That's a comment, not a question. The question is, if we were to vote no, what's SLA going to do? Does it do? Are they going to deny the license if we vote no? Are they going to um, uh, do our stipulations that were voted down still be part of the public record? How, how, how does it work? 
The way it works, Jeff, the way I understand it, um, uh, and Mark and anybody else, is we we had this immersion and we voted it down and we had put in the stipulations and this goes to the uh, SLA. And then they added, uh, uh, they voted in for in favor with some additional stipulations. Um, not everything we had asked for because they're in the business of approving. So, for just a second. So, is your lesson learned from that that we would have been better off voting a resolution with stipulations or not? Now that's a great question. On this one, on that one, Jeff, I'm not sorry we do totally defeated it. Okay, I don't know what to do on this one because it's beer and wine. It's not alcohol and they're much more um, accepting of this. Um, uh, Mark and I talked about this, Francis Curtis and I talked about this. I mean, my co-chairs um, and the and the, 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 the group talked about it. So we tried to be as stringent as we possibly could. And that's why I put that last uh, further be it resolved because he has not done the the um, the soundproofing, and so I don't know. How, yeah. Okay. I okay. That, that's enough direct. explanation for, for my question. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Okay, Sarah Cassell, you you are the last one with your hand up. I'm wondering. Um, cl I mean, clearly they're having a a huge argument. The guy next door and and the owner of this bar. Um, do you have any sense as to whether, um, I mean, have there been illegal parties there? Is that a yes or no? Well, uh, what I can tell you is that they are able to apply for these one night venues the way I understand it. I'm not as well versed as Jeff Ehrlich or maybe Mark can answer me, uh, but my understanding is he can have these parties and uh, 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 I had would have helped, hoped he would have been a better neighbor, but I gather from uh, some of the public comments tonight, he hasn't been. If we defeat this, we have to go to the SLA with our resolution and uh, I have to go again and spend three hours there and we have to try to do something uh, which with the community, uh, which they're not always open to. That's all I can tell you, Sarah. I'm sorry. If whether they decide whether whether we pass this or not, um, the man can keep holding these parties. I believe he can. They call right, the they police, can. whatever they they, and there are no regulations for him because he can have these these venues. Thank you. Okay, with that. I am stopping my timer. Sarah's questions are done. So let's uh, move forward, call the question. Second. All right. Any abstentions? Any opposed? Sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Wait. Give her Abst a chance. Yeah, abstentions. Um, Townley abstains. Cassell abstains. Yeah. Forsberg abstains, and I want to change my last vote, if I may. Uh, I, I, it's late, and I got these two mixed up. I thought that's what I was abstaining for in the last one. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Thanks. Cool, cool. <laughs> um, all right. So Townley abstains. Cassell abstains. Forsberg abstains. From this one, not the last one. Correct. Oh, Changes my uh, vote to a yes on the last one. Thank you, okay. Jeff. Kucha abstains. Kucha. Sorry, Susan Blank abstains. Right. It's a, tough Don't one. Worry about it's a that. really tough one. I, I have no personal interest. We try to do the best we can. Schneck abstains. Schneck. Anybody Mullen. else? Um, Mullen abstains. Mullen abstains. Sorry, Maybe. this is this is Zelter. If, if I vote yes or if i'm voting in the affirmative i'm opposing approval of the license unless the stipulations are met is that correct correct thank you that is correct 
That's the way it's written. And we will so, put a letter. And I, I would like to say this, Lucian and I. Susan, let the boat go. I was okay. really trying to get the I'm sorry. All right, so I got, I have a Townland, Cassell, Forsberg, Kucha, Blank, Schneck, Mullen, abstaining, any other abstentions? Any opposals? Uh, Galloway opposes. Galloway. Amoruso opposed. Amoruso. Anyone else? All right. Any recusals? All righty. We're done here. Thank you. All right. Thank Susan, you. are you done? Did I pass? I write a letter with this. Final That's vote? What I'm going to do. So, final yeah, vote. Pass. Okay. And I will say, based on the level of, of controversy that this has caused, it will go with a letter from the SL, from the, from Susan and I. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Susan, we're done. Yeah. We're done, baby. Awesome. Next committee, please. Betty Kay. You're second to last to take us home. Come on. No, I keep getting these end ones. Anyway, the, there really are just two resolutions to be talked about and voted on. The first one is a request for a revocable consent to add an accessible ramp up to the 159 Worth Street entrance uh, of the 80 Center Street building. If you go to the next slide, I hope they put in the ones I asked for. Next slide. No, they, uh, well, go down another picture, because I want you to see a picture of what it looks like. Yes, this is the resolution. This is the building, which is the 80 Center Street. Because of the large number of stairs, you go to the next one. Sort of the back door to get into the same space is this entry. This is the entry where they would be putting the ramp. Where the ramp is is where you see the red dotted area. And that would at least make the building uh, accessible. Fantastic. You know what's nice, Betty? I don't see. Oh, I do see one hand. Alice, go. Yeah, thanks, Betty. Um, is this something that's appeared before the Landmarks Preservation Commission? I can't, I don't know the answer to that. Well, I would think that the um, your you know I, the couple of things. First of all, center and center are spelled um, differently, and it is C E N T R E. Just a small point, and it's a little Correct. unclear. I might advise to say the vocal consent for accessible ramp at the. Lewis Leffickwood State Office Building entrance at 159 Worth Street because I was spent a lot of time figuring out where, where this ramp was going. Um, and then just lastly, um, I would say that you're therefore be resolved to certainly include, um, I would say, um, the way you've got it, but um, what did I say? And that a sign and ramp receive a favorable LPC, Landmarks Preservation Commission review before you know we would sign off on that that would i i would like to add that as a friendly amendment well keep in mind that dcas as far as the address uh, i use the terminology that is on the dot application as entered by dcas okay who runs well this it's, building. i don't know you also refer to something at 141 worth street and 10 hogan place i'm not sure that's the other there, there is yeah. another use of this building but it is different space. I understand. It just was a little confusing. But anyway, be that as it may, the main point is the friendly amendment that I've just mentioned that the sign of ramp received a favorable LPC review. Do we know if it's subject to LPC review? I'm pretty sure it is. But Lucia, I believe that, I believe that um, accessibility ramps are, are approved on a staff level. Correct. I don't think it goes before. I, I think it's staff level. Well, it gets reviewed it to our it's committee. Like, I mean, that's the review is at the staff level, but it gets yeah. reviewed. Okay. That's that should be Betty. That's nothing controversial. We good with that. I think it should be voted on. I, I don't want to vote for the committee because they voted okay. on this. That's fine. We could do that. Does anybody, uh, we can do that. We can, uh, Mark. 
Amarusi. I agree with the amendment, and uh, if it's not accepted by the chair, we like previously said, we should vote on it. Um, and it, all, uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but n not all ramps are necessarily all decided at staff level. Some are not. So it, I think it depends, but I'm not 100% sure about the criteria, but not all are. So that, that, I, that much I know. Um, thank you, Mark. But I second uh, the motion to vote on this amendment. That's fine. We're going to take two votes. We'll vote on the amendment and then we'll vote on the resolution. I'm going to do um, Betty Art, and we're good with that for the committee. We'll actually just do it as a full board. So we're going to assume yes, um, which is simply to have, you know, Alice, what, it's just LPC review, right? That the sign and ramp receive a favorable landmarks preservation commission review. There are Perfect. two things that are going in front of a landmark building of great significance, which we almost lost to the jail. Let us at least have them review it before we okay it. I think it's a fair. Tammy, request. can I ask you a question about? Um, I'm confused about how to vote, so I just want to ask you one question. Or the first question that we're going to ask for, Mitch, is that what Alice has added, which right. is that. The accessible ramp have LPC and a favorable LPC review. Right, and that's what sign I wanted. I, and the I sign that's ask, being requested. I wanted to ask a question about that, so we'll determine how I vote. Okay. If hypothetically, the LPC uh, would would then deny it because it doesn't meet the uh, the landmarks uh, uh, res uh, regulation then the accessibility could be the accessibility ramp could be denied uh, hypothetically hypothetically and uh, yes tragically building has to have an accessible entrance doesn't it so that, that, that's I, what i happen to know this one because the other is the uh, the marriage bureau with county clerk the other two entrances to this building, not the two we're discussing here, but the other two are the ones that had access to that. The one, my son got married here. I had to go into the accessible entrance. It is all security and it is where the uh, employees can go, but it is heavily security. It takes forever to get a guard. They have to walk you through the building. You can't go with anybody else. To think that the circuit that the courts and any employees going to the court buildings would have to go through this rigmarole every day is, I think a lawsuit would be what would happen from ADA that you can't just make these, you're not allowed to work or go to these buildings. Okay. Mitch, your answer has been done. Uh, Margaret, uh, Gerald Mariama. Uh, yeah. Just very quickly, I, I su support the resolution. I support Alice's amendment as well. Um, I don't believe that uh, at the staff level, I mean, if this was reviewed at the staff level, what, what effectively exactly. this is doing is permitting the staff to have input into a his, the, the design of, of this, this structure, uh, the ramp, and, and I'm fully in support of that. Thank you, Mariana. Yeah, would they cancel out the ramp altogether or just say that we don't like this type? This type isn't befitting of a landmark. That because that's my understanding. They would just make you go that's back to I the drawing board about. and yeah. redesign it, but they would still allow a ramp, no? Gerald's saying yes. Okay. Thanks. I believe okay. so. Could be either. Right. Both of you quiet. No. Could be either one. Mark. Mark. No crosstalk. Thank you. Gerald, thank you. You're, you're not able to question. Second. Now it's two, one to uh, Alice's motion and second is for the resolution overall. We're going to run them one and then two. Mimi, take it away. I didn't quite catch that. So we're voting on the amendment and then we're voting on the actual. Correct. Got Correct. it. Okay. Um, any opposed the amendment? Yes, I I uh, vote no on the amendment, but yes on the resolution. Okay. 
Any other opinions on the amendment or votes on the amendment? All right, so the amendment passes. And um, any abstentions from the opposed? Any abstentions for this whole thing? Whole shebang. Nope. Opposed? Nope. Cues? Sounds like we're good. We're good. Okay, Betty, the next one City Biking Full. Yes, and this one comes back from last month where it was withdrawn because of the late hour and you notice we're back there again. Anyway, what has been changed is just to the comment about the pops being added. Uh, so you'll notice there is one more bullet point here to not place the city bike stations on pops without convincing justification and community support. So the adjustment was made in response to last month's. What is without convincing? I mean, that is, I would not, I would like to amend that that be taken out of convincing justification, community support. Yes, but convincing justification. I mean, my goodness, every agency believes they have convincing justification to do what they'd like to do at every spot. So I would amend that that be removed. <laughs> Alice, Alice, I will take it that your hand was up and I called on you first. Right, this has come back from the last time we had this argument at the full board meeting and it was worked on in committee. Specifically about the wording about where some of the sidewalks, for example, the side of Stuyvesant. Has that giant area that is considered a sidewalk. And you're saying that they would not be allowed to have a city bike station at the side of Stuyvesant. Because technically that is considered their sidewalk as you access through the bottom of the greenway. That was the last conversation we had at full board and it was worked on in committee, which is why it says that if you have different verbiage for being allowed to put that instead of convincing justification without approval by the community board or something like that, think that through and I will come back to you on that. And let's go through the others. Mariama, Jeff, Justine, Gerald, and back to Alice after that. I'm sorry, I failed to take my hand down. Okay, so Jeff, Justine, Gerald, and Alice. Um, I support the resolution as written. I, I like the convincing justification language for the reasons that uh, Tammy stated. Um, uh, I think City Bike is a wonderful amenity that contributes in a very positive way to the community, and it's not always possible to place them on the streets, nor is it always appropriate to place them on the streets. So, uh, but I do think a preference for the streets is appropriate, which this resolution states, but the Stuyvesant example is a good one. And I can think of other sidewalks that are also appropriate locations as well as pops for that matter, if there's convincing justification. So I like the resolution. Uh, Justine, Gerald, Mark, Andrew, Justine. Thank you, sorry, I'll be quick. Um, so I like your explanation as to what this means. It's not necessarily how I read it. So I might be preferring just to say with that, um, with replacing convincing justification with community board approval. We spent a lot of time on this discussion. A lot Betty, of time. Betty, yeah. she's, Betty, she's said it, she's. And that's, I would suggest, I, and it's fine if you don't change it, then that it. it Got it. But it doesn't make sense to me this way. Thank you. Got it. Gerald. Yeah, I think uh, in thinking this through, um, I believe that most city sidewalks um, are, are about 15. Uh, let, let me just say this. I want to make a friendly amendment um, to not place city bike stations on sidewalks 15 feet or less in width in our district. And I would take out without convincing justification. And perhaps that would help with... Um, Alice. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to come back to that. Uh, Mark, Andrew, Patrick. So I would note that, uh, this week in Tribeca or last week, uh, Citibank installed two new city uh, 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 bike locations, taking away 
uh, alternate side street parking, which we need more of. And I would just note as a side note that this transportation committee voted twice to put that on the agenda to add more alternate side parking, but the chair still refused to put it on the agenda. So I want to have an amendment. Mark, Mark stay see? focused on this resolution, please. Only about city bikes and riding on sidewalks, not about anything that we're talking about that haven't gotten put on agenda, just this. Please. Can I finish my statement, please, Madam Chair, without being interrupted? If you can stay on topic, yes. Yeah, well, it is on topic. Just because you don't think it is, is irrelevant. It is on topic. We're talking about Citibank. So uh, I'd like to add an amendment uh, that, that uh, in addition to the sidewalks, that they not take away alternate side street parking. I'd like to have that voted on. There's no such thing as a friendly amendment. That has nothing to do with riding on sidewalks. That has nothing to do with riding on sidewalks. I'm a, I, I first put out a, an amendment, and if someone seconds it, we vote on it. I, I'd like to second it. Wait a minute. Uh, Madam, this is, this I, Madam Chair, point of, explain, point of order. You cannot, Mark, so Mark, just put up. Mark, explain. This is the rules as we're going. I just put up an amendment, and it was seconded. We need to vote on it now. If you don't like what? it, that's your problem. But what you can't change the rules in the middle of everything. What is the amendment? I don't even understand don't, what you're saying. Well, I'll repeat it. I'll repeat the amendment. That city bike not take up any alternate side streaking parts to install city bike uh, uh, locations. It was just seconded. Let's vote on it. Madam Chair, as a point of information, point, uh, motions to amend are debatable. So not we once it's seconded, it needs to be voted on. And it was just seconded. They're debatable. They're debatable. They are debatable, as our parliamentarian has said. So we are debating it. We are going through the debate, which is what the conversation was when Alice made one. Yours All is right, a second. So I'm going to remember this the next time that that someone says it was seconded and there's no more time for discussion. So remember this, everybody, that this was said, that we can debate it after a second. Debating Alice's wording. It was Madam Chair, for the point of information, it depends on the motion. Thank you. We're we're debating Alice's wording with the convincing justification from the sidewalks. This is how we started. This um, is what we said. Point of correction. I was referring to the second bullet point about the pops, which is in fact illegal to have bikes on pops. This is the third time I've reviewed this, and I have been at this committee. City bikes and other and are not allowed on POPs, which has been confirmed by the Department of City Planning. Convincing justification is a very dangerous way to go. This is the third time this has come up, and no. I think this community is in, it, it should not be supporting that. That's as simple as that. I'm not talking about sidewalks. I was talking about the second point. That's it. No, that's why it was omitted the first time, because it is illegal. So why even talk about it? Well, then why is it here? Because that was insisted that it be put in there. Otherwise, I'd be well, glad to take it out because I don't think it belongs there. The first resolution that the committee did on this, I'll uh, re refresh your memory, it in fact appeared that we should allow them on POPs. So I spoke up at that point because I don't think everyone was aware that those shouldn't have happened. And I think it's important to remind DOT of this because, in fact, they are sitting right now, as we all know, on 200 Water Street. So a reminder that they should not be placed there and that if you want to add a line that they are not legal, that would be fine. But they certainly shouldn't be there with convincing justification. That's all my only point. So, Alice, I thought your first one was on sidewalks for convincing justification, because that's where I thought that your lines were. The pops, Betty, were supposed to come out completely because they are illegal, and that was the conversation we had. I'm not really sure how this got in here because it was never supposed. The whole point was they were illegal to be in the pops. Once the order was exterminated, they were supposed to be removed from the pops oh. before they're located in the pops. So I'm not sure how this language got in from committee to here. I'm not even even at where Mark is yet because we haven't fi finished where Alice is yet. So Alice, my you know the conversation that I had about convincing justification had to do with just city bikes on the sidewalks, right? And then 
the second one wasn't supposed to be in there. Period. It was I say it wasn't in there last month, and I it was only put in there because Alice last month said it needed to be in there. I'd be happy to take it out. It. I'd love it, to take it. It's out. an important point to get rid of the ones that are in there. You can say it however you want. I at this point, it's late in the night. I think you get the drift. Um, they it, should not be in pops. That's all there is to it. I don't know how you want to word it. Tammy, can I can I can I make a suggestion on on? Uh, I'm, gonna, I I, I'm gonna take Alice's first. Yeah, no, it's about Alice's thing. Okay. I agree with Alice. Just say do not to place city bike stations on pops, as it is illegal. Period. So perfect. The first one is removing convincing justification. And saying it doesn't go on sidewalks without community board approval. That's what I'm hearing from every single person who has spoken so far. So, therefore, if it's a location Not from me, you haven't heard that. <laughs> but Jeff, Jeff, it was there is justification. It should it should be allowed. It would be allowed with justification with community board approval, but without convincing justification, we don't have a mechanism. Otherwise, city bike just says that's where it goes. So that is the only way to be able to say supportive of it. I, I guess I'm not following. I, I I agree with Alice on a lot of things, but I disagree with her on this particular point. There are certain pops, including 200 Water Street, where it looks like a, a very good place to put um, uh, city bikes. Now, if it's if it's illegal, it's illegal. But I'm I, I don't know what statute says that it's illegal, and I kind of agree it, with uh, with the comment that. If it is illegal, we don't need to address it at all, and the law will just address it. <clears throat> but I don't think we should say something's illegal unless we have some support for it. We did. It's, we a good point. it's not technically illegal. I think it's it's a, it's contrary to the Department of City Planning regulations. I'm not sure that talks about illegality. I, I couldn't say exactly the word the wording on that. Maybe Patrick can help. But and just to be clear, 200 Water is supposed to be a plaza, a big open plaza with water and trees. That's what we fought for. Um, so by having bikes there, we're never going to see that. Okay. 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 Betty, I am almost at the point of saying we should bring this back to committee again. I know that sounds like a terrible thing, That's fine. but I'd rather just table it. I ask that Mark goes to the committee meeting. Jeff goes to the committee meeting. Alice, please take a look at the regulation for the pops because I do want it to be in there because we have to protect the pops. That's, the, I mean, we talk about that at every opportunity so we want to make sure that we reference the pops regulations mark can go to the committee meeting with what he would like to be put in here about the siting of city bike locations and the riding on the sidewalks as it relates to his parking and have it being debated in committee that was the whole goal from bringing it from december back into committee in january it needs to go back to committee I'd be happy to attend that meeting. Motion Mark. to table. Mark, you good with that? Yes, I just said motion to table. Second. Right, second. All right. So is this the vote, the final vote for uh, mm -hmm. the attendance? This would be? Sorry, the motion to table is not debatable. You have to vote. No, I mean, this will be the vote to count for attendance, right? Sorry, Mark, I was being a little cheeky. Me, okay, I'll no just problem. withdraw the amendment. I mean, I'll just withdraw the resolution. Don't vote. You're withdrawing the resolution is your I'll choice. It. That's fine. Motion. The resolution is withdrawn. Okay. And with that, Betty, are you done with your report? Yes. Sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. Next month, no matter who has what, Betty goes first. There you go. I will be very quick. It'll take all of three minutes, if not that much. Um, Battery Park City Committee, the Downtown Alliance bus was out of service from November. Before. Justine, are you the last committee? No, <laughs> afraid not. And Betty no, and I, I can no resolution. For That's first why place. I'm going quick. I'm going quick. Connection bus is up and running. All good. Seniors, I was very happy to report. I'm happy to report that there are over 200 seniors in the senior group, and I wish you all a lovely day. I'm done. That's it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Take us home. Um, first of all, thank you, Betty, for your patience on that and everyone else. Um, uh, okay, I, I think we're going to just, um, 
allow that you all look at the Lower Manhattan Quarter Resiliency Update, um, which um, will be part of the, uh, which Diane is putting in the chat, but which will also be sent around. It, it's well worth taking a look. 90% of it is everything you've seen before if you've shown up to these things. I think the most um, important thing or the fact that the Wagner Park closing um, and the South Battery Park is imminent. Um, and that we've asked that we have a very good understanding of what parts are open and what parts will close um, in our entire lower Manhattan neighborhoods. Um, the other thing that was mentioned was this, the interim, interim flood protection measures are supposedly coming in um, on the west side, studies of them. So I, I would say that we're not, they said they wouldn't be in before 2024 if in fact they can be put in. So we have a long time still on the west side for anything to be um, made uh, protected. Um, and that it was another important feature was that this is a fight I see for plan. And Diana, you could just flip through these slides. Uh, it cost between five and seven billion dollars. Uh, that was an interesting number. And um, that's about half, by the way, of what the proposal is to build the four new jails in New York City. Um, and the seaport coastal resiliency plans, we saw they got another 60 million, went up to 160 million dollars for those plans. That that's the one that Diana's got up there now. And uh, we learned that 8.8 .8 million of this is coming from Howard Hughes for waterfront on Esplanade work and public amenities, which we've asked that we have more definition on. And this is a this plan. We've also asked for a, a full full. Um, uh, presentation on uh, uh, probably will happen in the summer when the RFP is out. Uh, the battery, we could keep going through the slides. We had the battery, the Brooklyn Bridge Esplanade, which is supposed to be starting. Um, with plans are done and it started in 20, the summer of 2022 for its completion. Battery, 164 million constructions to begin next year. And the Battery Park City Authority which um, I just mentioned, uh, the RFP will be out February and we've asked to th see this and have a presentation and update on the North Battery, which will happen um, hopefully uh, probably the month after next. So, um, and then lastly, next month, um, the Army Corps of Engineers will come and talk about the West Side of New York and that's gonna be a very important meeting because funding has been is resumed in that. Uh, okay. Sorry for this being brief, but needless to say, and that's probably the way we all want it. 250 water. So next, I mean, I'm not going to ask. I don't know that anyone's going to have. Does anyone have a question on this or something that they want to say? Feel free. I don't see any hands. Okay. We will share all the links. There's a lot. To <clears throat> it is a lot. And I mean, and the only thing I'd say is the good news is that we had a presentation that included everybody. It was a very big group from all parts, right? So it went all the way around, and that was we finally got that happening and that's a very important thing to look at this cohesively of course um okay 250 water street laura dodge our independent consultant is um working on finishing up her comment letters uh to the new york state department of environmental conservation which we should have received today in fact so we will issue that those comments and put those out as soon as we receive them and um, I want to thank, um, I think it was Michael Kramer on behalf of the Seaport Coalition, uh, their engineer who they've hired, I think, um, had some very excellent points, which will be included um, in the notes to uh, Langen Engineering, et cetera, and we'll forward those on to Laura um, Dodge. Um, all the questions that came up at committee, and there were some very important ones, will be also addressed to Laura, and we'll get we will get answers on all of those and post those. And then, lastly, the last resolution. I think we can go through the next slides. I think we, yeah, there we go. Okay, so this so this is on five World Trade Center findings of no significant impact environmental assessment. So FONSI is the finding no significant impact and this is the environmental assessment. What's to be known here is that in 2004, which is a long time ago, the there was an environmental assessment done and then it was because the building went from being commercial to having a residential component, this catalyzed the ability to re-look at the environmental assessment and that's only why it was done for the building today. And so um, this was done in December of 2021 and we are basically coming on this and the comments are due next month. So 
that's what we've put forth here. Hopefully you've all been able to review it. Maybe we go over to the therefore be resolves to kind of move things along. Um, I don't think it's controversial. Um, we're basically ask, asking for more information for a dedicated meeting to review the consequential environmental impacts that are in this project. And um, these are the two you'll see here that you can read. Alice, you've got one hand up thus far. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Alice, it's just me. Uh, all those links I've been sending you about um, climate negative buildings, uh, I'd really love. This is just for a meeting, which is great, but let's talk to them about that. Let's see if they can make an example of how we should build in a new generation of building. I think it's a brilliant idea. I'm all for it. Absolutely. We should we'll get talk that about it. Yeah, thank you. I meant to get back to you on that. That's true. Yep. I'm glad you brought that up publicly. Um, anything on the resolution itself? So we're really just looking for a meeting that kind of identifies and allows the public to really engage on all the environmental issues. And we'd like to do that with the borough based jails as well, as a matter of fact. So um I would Alex, I would like yeah. to call the question. Um a lot of us gotta go. And it's yeah. a good resolution. Yeah. Please do. Uh and somebody a needs second. to chow over a second. Stop. Roll call. Yes, this will be roll call. Yes, this will be roll call. Yes, Mimi will take roll call. Chow has his hand up and he somehow got popped into the attendee section. I'm sorry. If you, and thank you. Uh, if you can move him over, I hope he didn't have a question. Because everybody in their, in their desire to get out yelled back and forth and didn't wait to be recognized. <laughs> understand? We all want to go home. I understand it's late and I understand that it needs to be more organized and yelling at each other is disrespectful. Okay. Period. Okay. Did you have no? This is Chow. I, I just yeah. wanted to uh, let you know I, I was kicked out, but I, I just wanted to uh, get someone's attention to get back in. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Now, Mimi, take us home. Roll call us. All right. Uh, Emma Russo. Mark, you there? Okay. Uh, Blank. Second vote for him. Yes. Blank. Yes. All right, Brown Kennedy. Brown Kennedy, yes. Thank you, Cameron. Cameron, yes. Thank you, Cassell. Cassell, yes. Thank you, Chang. Chang votes yes. Thank you, Chapman. Chapman votes yes. Thank you, Charcutian. Charcutian votes yes. Thank you, Cole. Cole votes yes. Thank you, Coleman. Coleman votes yes. Thank you. Corman? And votes yes. Thank you. Kuja? Kuja votes yes. Thank you. Curtis? Curtis votes yes. Thank you. Flores? Flores votes well, I'm sorry, what was that? Yes. Thanks. Uh, Flynn, yes. Thank you. Forsberg? Forsberg votes yes. Thanks. Franker? Franker votes yes. Thank you. Friedman? Friedman, yes. Thank you. Roman? Roman, Roman, yes. Roman, Roman. yes. Galloway? Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein? Goldstein, Goldstein yes. yes. Thank you. Grant? Grant? Grant, Grant, yes. Grant. Please mute yourself until it's your turn to vote. People are unmuting themselves in anticipation and it's making a horrible feedback. Uh, Gupta? Gupta votes yes. Thank you. James? James, yes. Thank you. Joyce? Joyce, yes. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Canal. Canal votes yes. Thank you. Kettering. Kettering yes. Thank you. Lamory. Lamory votes yes. Thank you. Thank you. Lerner. Lerner, who's already home, votes yes. Thank you. 
So glad you're home. Mahoney? Mahoney votes yes. Thank you. McHugh? McHugh? Get back to you. Meltzer? Meltzer votes yes and is delighted to be at home so we don't have to. Moore? Moore votes yes. Thank you. Mullen? Mullen votes yes. Thank you. Schneck? Schneck votes yes. Thank you. Star? Uh, recuse. Recuse, all right. Jimmy Song? Jimmy Song, yes. Thank you. Vera Song? Vera, yes. Yes, thank you. Townley? Townley votes yes. Thank you. Z? Z, yes. Thank you. You? You? Eric, you still there? All right. Seltzer? Seltzer, yes. All right. And Amaruso, are you there? Okay. He's uh, there. He just has to mute himself. Oh, okay. Can we help him out on that one? Is it possible? And we also need McHugh. Is McHugh still there? Or did did Megan leave? Somebody in the attendee with the hand raised. I don't know if that's somebody. Hmm. That might be Eric again. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That would that would be good. Um, somebody getting. Let's move over the hand. Mark has to do star it. to get. Maybe that's his number. I just moved them to panelists, and Mark Amoruso left the house. Okay. Back, I thought. No, he left. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Well, if everybody's going to be quiet, then I think we're we're done here. Actually, can, I misspoke. I need to change. My, can I change my vote? Who is this? I'm sorry. Uh, can I change it to yes? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. yeah sorry. Okay. You are yes yeah, now, Laura. Thank you. All right. So that's a uh, forty. Yes. Okay. He can't unmute. Uh, uh, Mark can't unmute himself. He oh, let me help me. Me. He'll vote yes, but he's here. He was. He just can't mm -hmm. unmute himself. Susan, okay. he has to be able to unmute himself. So if he Star does, six is unmute. Star three raises their hand if you're on the phone. So he should identify himself by typing in star three, and then I can click on mute, and then he'll he can take it the rest of the way. Star three, and I think he's got his hand raised if he's that nine one seven seven number. But he's star muted. six. But Mark, I sent a request on mute. Okay, you guys can. All right. Anyway. Yeah, that is definitely Mark. Okay. He voted yes. Yeah, we just got to say it, but he's, he's I know. the last vote, I get it. So. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, all. Good night. Good night. To adjourn. Uh, to adjourn. Uh, and second, meeting call to a close 10 19. Thank you so good much, night. everybody. Thanks, Mark. Good night. Mark, do me a favor. If you can manage to mute yourself, Mimi and I will stay here with Lucian for a verification. Thank Mimi, you guys. Good night. So, Lynn, yes. And then you go, thank you. You thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tammy. Good night. I just don't have to say it out loud. So, six. Please. Tammy, thank you for doing what is really a rough job. We really? appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank, thank you so much, rough. Tammy, and all of you. Think about think about your park and parks and rec thing, right? <laughs> parks and rec club.
Thanks. Good night, everybody. Everybody. Jeff, thanks for all the work on that mezzo. Village. <laughs> We're waiting, Mark. Let us know. Yeah. Also, let me know if there's any feedback on the new timer. It was a, a fun weekend project. So um, I everybody, I love the color. Everybody loved the time. <laughs> yes. Hey. Hey. It, it wasn't working. I kept hitting it. It wasn't working. I don't know why. So yes, vote yes, vote yes. All right. Yes. Thank All right. you. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. Okay, it. Thank you. All right. I'm going to okay, go. Bye. 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 B